Welcome to The Art of Ministry, Episode 9, with Dave McGillivray, looking at drama and the arts in Christian ministry. I hope you enjoy. So you guys all good to go? Should we pray beforehand? <laughs> it might be good to pray beforehand, actually. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Dave, do you want to lead us? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this time. Uh, Lord, thank you for this technology that um, links us up in, uh, yeah, live and living colour. And, uh, yeah, we just uh, pray that you would guide our conversation, that it would be uh, that it would be fruitful, uh, that it would be fun, um, that it might be life-giving for those uh, who will listen. Uh, so, yeah, prompt us with good words, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dave, I'm not in your calibre when it comes to vocal projection and the dramatic voice but i'm going to do my best for this intro and we'll see how we go <laughs> sure. so welcome everyone to the art of ministry a podcast about god and creativity we cover the arts in the broadest possible sense and we've looked so far at diverse topics like puppetry wooden puzzle carving visual art radio broadcasting and even hosting a christian music festival but today we have another new and exciting artistic area to explore with a wonderful guest dave mcgillvray dave is an accomplished actor and he will share with us all about his own journey with god and being involved in theater and other dramatic contexts so without further ado welcome dave Hey, well, hey. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I, I will insert the cheering in. I'll do that for everyone. So <laughs> the cheering will be with you. And Dave, I'm going to kick off with a fun question. So uh, here you go. I know from times that I've seen you at Bible College and seen you doing some dramatic stuff there, uh, I know you've got some background in drama, but I would like to ask if you could act with or opposite any actor you know, dead or alive, you know, hopefully alive, as they say, uh, dead or alive, who would it be? Who would be your ideal actor that you'd like to work with? Uh, that's a really hard question yeah. uh, because <laughs> I I guess I, I, I fancy myself uh, as a bit of an all-rounder and so it sort of depends what I'd want to be doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, you know, I think like... Uh, so you know cl uh, classical actors would be amazing uh kate winslet um, yes kate blanchett mm. like those um that, <clears throat> that would just be extraordinary um but i i, I think if i if i was to do uh, probably my, my the sort of the fantasy that i have some <laughs> sometimes yeah. um is uh you know stage show all-rounder cabaret hugh jackman um, ah, yes. like i just <laughs> that, I, yeah. I just feel that would be tremendous fun um yeah yeah but no, look, i mean the just it's an endless sort of list um and i guess even um without thinking i guess of you know big big listers i've i count myself very lucky with some of the people that i've had a chance to work with um already uh people who have uh, quite accomplished mm -hmm. um theater careers especially um you know people who've been part of national touring <laughs> productions and professional productions um and to find myself acting opposite them singing opposite them and seeing mm -hmm. them work is is just a privilege and every time you learn something learn something new and yeah it's yeah great. Mm. Excellent. Mm. yeah did you did you see the video of hugh jackman when he was uh i think he was outside an awards show and he <laughs> recognized one of the reporters was one of his old students he taught pe to yeah right oh and he, like just runs up to them yeah, and he recognised yeah. his name, and yeah, wow. uh, he told him, he goes, I'm really concerned about your physical fitness, you know, how you're going with that, and <laughs> it was fantastic. He, he just seems like, a, he's like a, yeah, he's a nice guy, but he, he yeah, does yeah, seem yeah. like he would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I reckon he am, I, am I remembering fun. right, is that the one where the reporter tried to interview him and Jackman recognised him and he yeah. didn't realise? Yeah, a guy called Roland. Like, I know yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <right. laughs> That's cool, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I've had things over right. Lucky. I've had things to Lucky for his. He's got a few questions for you. Yeah, do it. Do a more serious question. Um, yeah, Dave. I was fascinated to find after knowing you for a while, hearing a bit about um, the story of when you came to faith, which I understand now is a fair while ago. Is it a twenty plus years? Um, yeah, like it's scary when you start saying things like that. 
Um, but I know that um, it's it's interesting because sometimes on this podcast we'll talk about using creative arts and um, as a as a sort of a gospel tool. Um, you're you're almost on the other side of that. That you have had moments where you've been on the receiving end of that. And uh, I was interested to hear that there's been elements to which um, sort of drama actually came into play in your process of thinking through faith and coming to faith. And I was just wondering if you wanted to tell us a bit bit more about that. Yeah, so um, straight out of high school, I, I went off to um, an acting uh, training college and, um, and it was in that time, which is odd, most people you know, swing away from faith, um, in the, in the, uh, in arts colleges and things like that. I, I had the opposite experience and really, I guess at the heart of that was, I think I, I really did, uh, sort of internalize that, that great actor question that's often lampooned, you know, what is my motivation? Um, you know, what, <laughs> what am I, what am I really on about? But I really started to ask that question for myself. Like what, what's my motivation? What do I believe? What, what am I on about? Um, and, uh, at the same time, uh, my my girlfriend at the time was a Christian. I was not. Um, we were trying to make that work, but it was really it was really complicated and increasingly difficult. And we were really at a bit of a sort of make or break time, probably break. Um, that that was the expectation. Um, but I went along to a conference, and um, you know, aside from the message and you know the the the, the main content of uh, of the conference, which was um, you know, really fantastic and 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 life giving in in so many ways, but rattled my cage as well. Um, really got me thinking. Uh, I think one of the things that really struck me was the you know they they had drama and um, and singing and the the creative arts were really utilised as part of the you know the, the the big picture of of those main sessions that we were a part of. Um, and of course, you know the the storytelling that went with that, the the place that drama played in in exploring. Uh, the, those really big questions was obviously a big part of it, but almost more so for me, the the startling thing was that like they were my people, um, you know, they were theatre people, they were performing people and mm. and they were clearly in this, you know, sort of God community, <laughs> this Christian community, um, which I think just helped in my mind kind of just bridge that gap a bit more that it, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, but actually the two, you know, that I can have a home here. Yeah. Um, and that, and I guess I, I found that encouraging because it, it didn't mean that I needed to, you know, feel that I needed to give up the arts um, in order to enter into, um, you know, or explore the, the Christian world as well. So, yeah, I just thought that I, I think that was a, a really, really helpful thing. Um, and then when I started exploring further, I got involved with um, a, a Christian group uh, attached to the university <laughs> And uh, I went along to one of their talks and they were preparing for a mid-year conference and um, they were asking for some volunteers uh, to be involved with the, the drama group there. And uh, uh, my, my girlfriend was like, you should, you, you should help out. And I said, okay. So I went down and I said, look, I, I'm really new to all this stuff, but um, I, I can, I can help with the mm. dramas maybe. And they said, oh, do you have any experience yeah. in drama? I said, well, I'm, I'm studying acting. And they were like, oh, great. Next thing I knew, I was in charge <laughs> of the dramas, um, having <laughs> no idea what was going on. And I remember um, the the main speaker was doing uh, a series on the Book of Romans. Mm. And oh. uh, I remember uh, I, I called this, this guy who I, I didn't really know. <clears throat> um, and I remember having a conversation that went something along along the lines of, you know, you're, you're doing something on Romans. What's a Romans? Like, I don't, like, I don't know what, what's this about? And, and he's like, oh, it's a book in the Bible. Yeah. I'm like, cool. What does it say? Like, can you sum it up for me? And he was like, wow. <laughs> so, you know, talk about a deep dive, but, but then it was, that was actually a really significant point of growth for me because not only mm. was I, you know, I was talking to people who were, you know, really fascinating and who was wise and, and had such great understanding of, of the Bible and the Christian <laughs> faith. But then I was having to process that in a sophisticated yeah. enough way to be able to translate that into meaningful um, dramas. And and the dramas that I wanted to do weren't weren't so didactic. They were actually quite. I, I, I like using humour, and so you know it's it's hard to be funny about something if you don't really understand it. And so I was doing these deep dives into these you know quite quite complex um, 
biblical and, and, and theological concepts mm. to then be able to reduce it down to just, you know, sweet little jokes. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it, and it was great fun. And then again, of course, that, that connected me with other like-minded people, um, artistically minded people and yeah. people who, you know, enjoyed performing and, and storytelling and those sorts of things. And so I think that really helped me to find some of my tribe with, within the Christian yeah. community, which was, which was very cool. I'd, I'd say in some ways, um, one of the things they always say is you you never learn quite as much about the Bible as when you're teaching it. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd say, you know, when you're writing a drama about it, it's even magnified. You know? Oh, yeah, mm. absolutely. And, and, and you know, and it was really daunting because I was, you know, I, I was suddenly like I was running a drama group full of experienced Christians. I'd, yeah. I'd been a Christian for like 40 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> And everyone's looking to me. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> so, needless to say, it was a very collaborative experience uh, because yeah. I, I had to. I was really relying on people, and I was testing everything. I'm like, is this right? Or, and and significantly, like, is this going to upset people? Because <laughs> I I was unaware of like what's taboo and what's not. Um, yeah. And you know, in the midst of an art, um, you know, an arts course, an acting course that was you know is about pushing the limits and pushing the lines. Um, yeah. I was like, I really don't want to upset these people who i'm yeah. I've just sort of made friends with um but we had yeah, yeah yeah and the, i was about to say the theater world and the uh the church don't necessarily have the same taboos <laughs> they really don't uh <laughs> different taboos. <laughs> yeah yeah that's mm. that's absolutely true well it sort of probably touches on my my next question dave you're you're one of those extraordinary beasts that seems to be respected both in the um, the Adelaide theatre scene, at, like the acting community, and also within the Christian community, which, like, having had some time in both is not something I see all the time. But I, I do remember having spoken to people on sort of both sides and both, you know, would hear your name and go, oh, Dave, he's really good value. You know, and I think you were doing Paris the first time I was hearing you mentioned in the theatre scene. and. Yeah. Um, and but it's interesting to, to what extent for you do those worlds mesh like is it is it one of these things that you have your sort of your theater world and your your ministry world and you sort of keep them separately or do you find yourself crossing the streams some of the time lots of the time you know to what extent do you, do you mesh those worlds yeah that's a good question and and thank you that's very that's very kind uh kind things to say um yeah it, look it's a really interesting thing because one, one of the things that i confronted very early on um was you know i, I was training for theater um and uh you know probably hopeful of film but but mainly theater sort of stuff um was my thing you know uh, shakespeare working with the state theater company and those sorts of things one of the things that really surprised me was in the Christian community, um, this sort of expectation of almost like spiritualizing these sorts of things all the time. And, you know, that people would just automatically assume, oh, you're a Christian, oh, you're an actor, oh, are you working for a Christian company? Or do you, mm. do, you know, do, do you do church dramas and things like that? And I, I, I always found that such an odd question mm. um, when, you know, if someone said, I'm a plumber, <clears throat> you wouldn't say, oh, did you do the taps in the kitchen yeah, of yeah. the church? Like you just, you wouldn't make that automatic connection. And yet people do with the arts. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I think maybe it's got something to do with the, you know, the arts that people typically see at church, uh, of things like music, which is a, is a bit of a gimme. And if, you know, if you play the guitar, hey, play the guitar at church, that'd be awesome. And so it's, you know, it's not yeah. a big leap. Whereas for drama, I always felt that was... Um, I don't know. I always felt funny about this sort of assumption that I would be doing, I'd been doing church dramas, and and also because like typically at a at a sort of parish level, church dramas aren't very good. You know, like yeah, that's that might be a terrible yeah. thing to say, but but on the whole, like I, it it sort of is its own genre. I, I kind of put it in its own category in the same way that I put actually put like high school drama in in a separate category. Like it's it's a genre uh, that's different. Mm -hmm. um, and and usually because the people involved in those, it, you know, it, in those communities, they don't typically have any experience of the professional world, and so mm -hmm. it does sort of generate its own weird little culture and and community and way of doing things. 
Um, and so in some ways, I think early on, I kept it I, like it was quite separate. So and, and I would deliberately <laughs> not do church dramas. Um, and if I did, it was it was usually a one man kind of a one man yeah. show, a single script that I'd written and, and I would sort of wanted to con control it, I guess, um, uh, to ensure good content. Um, but no, they were they, they were quite separate um, for, in the beginning for me. Um, and in some ways that's continued. So, you know, performing in musicals and, um, and, and doing fringe shows and things like that, like that's my playtime. That's, that's my decompress. That's my creative outlet. Um, and also being in a position of, you know, of genuine responsibility in ministry, it's a community I get to be a part of where I'm not in charge. And, mm. and I, I don't have mm. any responsibilities apart from, you know, <laughs> rock up and do my job. And, yeah. and and do it well and uh and, and have fun that that's it that's that's what i'm there for um and so i and so th there's a personal side of it for me that that they are necessarily separate uh for, for 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 those for those reasons but at the same time i'm a minister and so that's you know the second question people ask is hey what's your name what do you do mm. um an Anglican priest i can't hide that and so, you know, I repeatedly out myself um, in in the um, in the arts community, uh, which which is good in a lot of ways. I think mm. I, I then become a bit of a lightning rod for people in the arts who are people of faith, um, mm. or for people who are you know curious <laughs> or or whatever. Um, and so, people will feel safe to sort of tell me, oh. I go to church too. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, that person goes to church as well. And they're like, do they really? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And that person over there, there's but there's a bunch of people. There are a lot of um, you know, there are a lot of people of faith in the arts community, um, but they do tend to stay on the down low a bit and and keep it on mm. the radar because because uh, it can be confronting. And I, I think especially in the last the last few years where um, it, it's not been easy to be a public uh, person of faith, um, mm. and so. I think a lot of people have just been keeping it pretty quiet uh, because it, it's just brought in un unwanted complication um, in a community that they love very dearly um, and they, they don't want to cause offence unnecessarily. <laughs> and so I think people have been quite, yeah, quite quite careful about that. Um, I mean, having said that, I, I'm now well and truly known uh, in the arts community as a, as a minister. And so uh, just the other day, I, I had a young woman um, uh, call me up we've done a few shows together um and she was just wanting to pick my brains a bit on on just some of those sticky questions on um balancing a life of faith and also being in the in the arts community and um yeah in terms of commitment you know rehearsals are happening on sundays or you know if yeah. it's going to impact my ability to volunteer at youth group like what how do you how do you balance that out like what do you how do you figure out those things and and then you know the, the other favorite sort of sticky question of what about playing a character who's a bit dodgy or you know or who who swears or you know those sorts of things how do you how do you manage that and so you know so we we, we you know we talked on the phone for quite some time and um and it was great so i i guess in some ways i'm a almost unofficial chaplain among some of the arts community as well yeah. um <laughs> which which is an incredibly difficult thing because the arts community is so transient um you know it's notorious that you i mean you rarely even say hey let's catch up sometime you usually say something like oh it'd be great to do a show sometime because we know that's mm. the only time we'll ever see each other <laughs> like yeah. We're, yeah. we're all pretty rubbish at catching up um and uh and and yeah it's it, it's just that you know that rhythm of the the gathering of of this um <clears throat> community that has to build deep trust very fast in order to be able to accomplish something significant and you do that and and then it just disperses that temporary family it really yeah. is yeah um, and there's an intensity yeah. there and the trust needs to be needs to be real but also i think you've got to be you've got to be a little cautious about that and and, and protect yourself in that because you can yeah you can very easily think these relationships <laughs> are are tremendously deep and earnest where actually it's someone i've known for three weeks um mm. You know, so which is which is an odd that that's to that's a really odd aspect of um especially uh, I'm sure other arts would would have similar things, but especially in acting, um I think that's mm. a, a particular quirk um mm. that that I 
I, I do think needs to be navigated quite carefully. But mm. yeah, bit of a sort of a camp mentality as a when you're doing a show together, you know. Yeah, yeah. it is. I I, I think so. Um, but I mean, I remember at acting school, you know, through first year, I, I got to know people's <laughs> intimate you know, vulnerabilities and fears and I shared mine and I, I knew these these deep personal things about people's lives and their experiences well before I knew if they had a brother, mm. you know, or or what school they went to or where they grew up or, or anything like that, you know, all, all of the regular superficial things, you you just kind of skip and you do, do a deep dive. So it's kind of funny, you, you skip all the things that you, in a, in a regular relationship, is what you use to build trust and get to know someone. Um, we we sort of skip past all of that, and then you find out a bit later. You go, oh, I didn't know you had an older brother, or you know, whatever, yeah. whatever it was. Or oh, you know that person as well. How about that? Like, um, yeah. So, Dave, anyway. do do you, do you think that that's not just the family thing that you spoke about, which I think is true? Do you think it's not just that, but also the fact that acting itself is quite a vulnerable thing to do as well, because you're often playing a character and that involves putting aside certain things in your own personality and and you know and so therefore you, there's a lot of trust that you need to have in other people is that do you think that's part of it as well oh absolutely i think um you know pub, public speaking is one of the the, the greatest yeah. phobias that people have right oh, yeah. and and why is that because it's an incredibly vulnerable thing to put yourself out in front of a group of people when you don't know how it's going to be received um yeah. Yeah. and so and, and that's yeah. even, you know, with a story that you're in control of or a message that you're absolutely in, in control of. Um, with with acting and the, the process of rehearsal is mm. you you need to be able to fully give yourself to a moment, in, in, import real emotion mm -hmm. and be able to push something that might be wrong. It might go bad. It might be silly. You you <laughs> might sound terrible. It, it you know rehearsal is about getting things wrong, um, yeah. And so you've got to be willing to do you know a bad performance if you like in front of people that you don't know, mm. and it, and so trust is necessary. And so I think mm. people with people with any sort of experience um, in the acting community, you basically mm. walk into a room and you just have to assume trust. Mm. Um, and so I, I remember a, a number of years ago, I was working on a show. Um, uh, I was performing in Jekyll and Hyde, which was just a real hoot. That was one of my all time dream, <laughs> you know, dream roles. That would have been fun. And I was playing <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde um, in, in this musical musical version of the story. And, yeah. um, you know, there was one night that um, I, 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 was a, I was a bit moved and I was, I was a bit emotional <laughs> at the end of the rehearsal. Um, and I'd I'd brought along some cakes to to sort of share among the cast and 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 I, I made a little speech. We're kind of halfway through the process, or maybe a bit bit past halfway. And I just earnestly thanked everyone in the room. I said because mm. you know I was I was acting, you know, taking this mystical formula that then converts me into hide and i was you know rolling around on the floor and screaming and, and and doing all this you know really intense physicality um and and i just wanted to thank everyone i said like I, i'm only able to really put myself out there and mm. and really push myself and challenge myself and do what i hope becomes a, a really great performance because of the safety in this room because I yeah. know none of you are sort of, you know, going, oh, what's he, you know, how embarrassing, what's he doing? Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was just really, really important. So you, mm -hmm. there's no way you can do a good performance without deep trust in the room. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It, it, it's one of those things that in some ways, when you're doing a theatre show, you have to actually trust those people to save you on a nightly basis. Cause you know, we've, we've said people are terrified of public speaking and, almost everyone's nightmare would be being in front of a room of 50 to you know 200 people and you have nothing to say you don't know what you're doing because the person you're supposed to be talking to is not on stage yes. so oh. every every night you're trusting them to come on and rescue you yeah <laughs> oh, yeah and and uh, you know yeah add, add into that um physicality dance 
choreography, <clears throat> um, you know, fight sequences, uh, whatever it is, lifts. Um, and, and then also, you know, the choreography that happens off stage, which is the movement of props, the passing of things, the helping costume changes. And look, in community theatre, you know, we sometimes have volunteers who help us with things like dressing and uh, moving of props, but usually that's also ensemble work as well. And yeah. you know, there's, if you've, you know, if you've got 45 seconds to, um, you know, to, to 60 seconds to get changed, um, you're you're really relying on people um, you need help to get you there meanwhile you're also stripping down in front of you know <laughs> these people like hello yep. i don't know you but these are my underpants um <laughs> you know, like, um so yeah I, I think that's true and then and and then i think there's a there's another deeper level of of all of this which is about the content itself um you know, I said before, you, we import real emotions. The things we feel are real and your body doesn't know the difference, right? Like um, you, the, the, your adrenal system is your adrenal system. Like it does what it does and your body responds accordingly. So whether they're manufactured emotions um, or whether they're in response to a fabricated reality in front of you, your body doesn't know the difference. The impact is exactly the same. You know, so mm -hmm. there are some shows or some scenes that you finish and you're just you know, you're strung out um, mm. because you've you've been through a grief process, um, you know, in a compressed period of time, uh, you know, and and that's real. And, and you feel that together. Um, and then sometimes it is about touching into real personal experience that mm. you then lend to the moment. Um, and And sometimes that does involve sharing those things with with each other um sometimes it is about checking in with people like if you've got an intimate scene with someone you need to check and make sure they're okay with that um mm. if there's mm. if there's violence if there's confronting scenes you, you need to make sure that people people are okay with that and you know everyone's got their stories everyone's got their experience and their and their pain and so um sometimes it is it's helpful to know people's stories so that you can care for each other and make sure that the the content of the story is not um not doing too much damage um, mm -hmm. on, on people and just looking out for each other on that yeah uh, Dave you often hear about as I'm sure you'd know a lot more about this than I would but you hear about method acting mm -hmm. uh, so how people get into character I've read a lot of that I'm fascinated by actors and actresses myself so I've read a lot into this sort of stuff in the past yeah. but mm -hmm. actors like Daniel Day Lewis who you know oh. will go out into the wild and live in these places saving private ryan you know actors who go and live in a warlike condition you know to prepare yes. do yes. you have a particular method you use to get into character or are you like uh other actors who uh, some other groups who are just uh, sort of immediately can put themselves in the moment and feel there's not a need for them to say write a background story to the character or anything like that uh, yeah, just hide it. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you do you find yourself going one way or the other, or is it always this way, or is it always that way uh, in acting? No, I mean, I I do have a method. It was the method mm. that I I studied, um, which was a, a a bit of a um, a sort of a, a bespoke method uh, that a, a man David Kendall um, developed, and and his method was based um, on. It was it was a bit of a drawing together of a number of uh, um, of, of different uh, methods, which included Stanislavski, which is he's Stanislavski, sort of the father of the method. Um, the method, yes. Yeah. The, the method, um, but also <laughs> um, uh, uh, Chekhov, um, and uh, but but significant significantly um, Rudolf Laban, who was um, uh, actually a choreographer. Um, and what Laban did was um, he wanted to develop a, a method of choreography um, that enabled <laughs> dancers to really embody emotion um, mm. and, and different feelings. And so that was, it was sort of steeped in a, a Jungian psychology. Um, and, and then so what um, uh, uh, David Kendall did um, was he sort of drew that together with um, Stanislavski and uh, and with a, a number of other methods and kind of developed this what I think is quite um, it's it's beautifully simplistic um, 
but it enables you to go to a depth of of really building a character who is a truly authentic with with a deep and rich inner psychological life mm. that translates into action and physicality um and so i find that very appealing i'm, I'm quite a physical actor um I, <laughs> I really like physical but i'm also very much a head actor um i can uh, you know, talking about, again, what's my motivation, right? Um, you know, <laughs> talking about what's going on for the character in the moment. What are your thoughts from, you know, from this line to that line? What's going on behind that? What does this mean? That's my jam. I, I can spend ages just um, just talking with people and, um, and, and considering for myself all of that. And so, yeah, sometimes that does involve, you know, working on a backstory. Um, and I think in, in some ways there's always an element of method, if you like. Like at the moment... This is, you know, my my weird facial hair because I'm, I'm I'm a week out of theatre um, yeah. for for a musical. So this yeah. is my detective uh, Carl Hanratty, um, and uh, so I get to walk around with this for weeks, right? <laughs> and so yeah, um, this is Dave, not Dave, my regular. This is, this is my dishevelled podcaster look. Just yeah, right. you know, yeah. <laughs> you're playing it up beautifully. <laughs> so, I carry um, it well. <laughs> It's believable. It's totally believable. <laughs> so authentic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there, there's always a bit of embodying and I, I do get a bit, sometimes I, I probably get a bit, not too carried away, but I, I, I do enjoy that side of it. Like I did, mm. um, I, I did a, 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 another musical years ago where I, I put on a bunch of weight um, and then, you know, lost it for, for the next thing that I was in. Um, and so, yeah, so mm. I, I, you know, the physicality for me needs to, needs to be real, and you've got to got to experience some stuff. Um, but especially if there's things that I, you know, I don't know much about or I've not experienced, I think it's mm. it's helpful to sometimes do a bit of a deep dive, and even and even try and gain some experience <laughs> of what, what does that feel like, and what 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 would I be like if if I lived like this all the time, or you know, those sorts of things. Yeah, um, I'm a bit method when it comes to skills um like I, I want things to be authentic um mm. so again when i did uh when i did jekyll and hyde um the props department gave me a blackboard that was for the um uh you know the lab his his laboratory yeah and i was like oh cool blackboard you know what's going to go on this and they're like no oh, no it's your blackboard <laughs> i was like oh man what am i supposed to put on here you know i'm, yeah. a, I'm an actor turned priest i don't know about chemistry um yeah. and so i i got in contact with a friend of mine who's was working at um, a university in their chemistry department and i said yeah. you know can you give me some like authentic 1800s chemistry compounds that could be formula <laughs> hj7 you know yeah and and he was like the yeah, old, you know, old chemistry yeah yeah what what did <laughs> what can what chemical compounds did they know you know the the, the chemistry of in mm. in the 1800s because it needs to be authentic um and so uh, i think we had we ended up with i think testosterone uh caffeine um some amphetamine um of some sort as well um and and there was something else i can't remember them now um but you know then then i was researching online found out their um you know their, their chemical makeup um reached back to my year 10 chemistry days of balancing chemical equations and uh, <laughs> you know and i sort of put them all together and then put it into google and it turns out google will spit out a you know a, a chemical modeling for you uh so then i had that and so then that that's what i put on the board so i had this you know this invented chemical compound with the 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 chemical diagram um molecular diagram on, on the board because I, I didn't want anyone in the audience who knew a bit about chemistry to kind of look at the board and for that to pull them out of yeah. the reality I, I didn't want them to look and just go that's nonsense that's, that's not even <laughs> that's nothing you know that doesn't even yeah. mean anything um so yeah you know which i mean I, know, I have no idea like i don't know that anyone ever looked at the board and was like oh interesting chemical equation but, um <laughs> yeah but, but it was good for me you know and and yeah. in some ways part part of the exercise was you know sitting up late at night scribbling chemical compounds and being a bit of a mad scientist you know and, <laughs> and sort of going oh ooh, look oh what if i put these together what happens then <laughs> yeah. um you know and so and and then that I guess that sort of became part of the character when I was in my lab, like, oh, you know, do, doing all these things. And I, yeah. I had a, a physic, a, a physicality and muscle memory that 
that sort of works with that. So yeah, no, yeah. I, I I guess I totally geek out and get and get a bit method. Um, but I think part part of the part of that method, um, you know, John, you said before when you said you know, or do you just do the thing where you're able to be in the moment? Mm. I, I th that that is the the purpose of method acting is that mm. you you do all of this work so that you've got a rich mm. backstory um and so that you can be in the moment mm. in in the same way that you and i are in this moment right now mm. and i don't have yeah. to think about it i don't have to think oh how does dave respond to these questions you know about being an actor when he <laughs> was younger and becoming a christian through that process I don't need to think about that because I've lived it. Mm. Um, and so my responses can be honest and, and, and in the moment. Mm. Um, and so that, that's really the goal of method acting is to be able to you, my, my um, acting teacher, David Kendall would say, you, you do your work and then you leave yourself alone mm. and be in the moment. Mm. I think that that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah like don't double don't don't think too hard kind of thing like don't double you, check yourself kind of thing you, yeah you shouldn't be you shouldn't be yeah um in in the moment it's and, and in some ways act, acting method and, and and the exercises that we do and those sorts of things a lot of that is just to get your conscious mind out of the way yeah it's sort of yeah. you know you occupy your mind with something and that's mm. you know you're doing a, a rubik's cube in your head or something um and then so that you're you're truly in the moment uh, mm. because yeah. it's like an accent you're fluent with this character yes yes that's that, that's right um and it means that and and, and the real trick is it, it's almost the art of distraction right um you sort of just distracting yourself is it, it reminds me of was it, um douglas adams uh, he said you know the, the art of flying is is it falling like tripping over and then forgetting that you're falling or something like that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The ground and miss. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so um you know it, it's a bit like that you're sort of distracting yourself so that yeah. you're not thinking about your lines because you shouldn't know what mm. you're going to say next like in this moment i kind of know what i'm going to say i know i'm heading somewhere i hope it's going to make sense but it's forming in the moment as the words come out they're influencing what the next words are going to be mm. um and so you need to be able to do that in the moment on stage in front of a camera or whatever it's yeah. just that you've memorized these words and then you've kind of got to forget that you've memorized them mm. and then the, the really scary part is when you're really in the zone is you're just trusting that these, that these words are going to come out. Yep. And sometimes you sort of, you can get to a point where you're like, ah, but, but they come out, they just come out and you're like, oh, and it feels yeah. natural and it feels instinctive. And that, that's an amazing moment when you're really in that moment. And then you go, yeah, I'm in the moment. And you go, oh, but then I thought about it. Now I'm not. No. I was always fascinated because I'm more kind of in the music world myself uh -huh. uh, it kind of part-time-ish and i was always fascinated by these freestyle rappers who oh i've read into some of their techniques i mean yeah, i think the guy in <laughs> hamilton the the fellow in hamilton was one of those guys yeah um, lin-manuel miranda yeah, yeah. He's, he's incredibly talented freestyle. yeah player. yeah and the best ones i mean i know some of their techniques are you know read the thesaurus you know like 20 words that rhyme you got them packed into your brain you learn and you know them so that whenever someone throws a topic out at you or you're in a radio station and oh you're wearing a red shirt you know and it said dirt or something you know like yeah, they, they just yeah. know they can do a double rhyme oh. like like that and i was fascinated by that because uh to a certain extent it's it, it feels a bit like acting to me because you you need to like like you said you need to know the background you need to have something that you're yeah. drawing on you can't just go in and be yeah. totally off the cuff. You've got to have something, but it can't. But at the same time, um, you know when people are a hundred percent, uh, in the you know able to get things off the cuff, like off the cuff purely from that circumstance, and you know when something's rehearsed as well, and they're both just as good as each other. They're they're just different things. Um, they're very different. Yeah, the, the art of the art of improvisation. Yeah, in um, acting too, and, and, and the art of performance. Yeah, they they they. They're quite different. Yeah, um, they're, yeah. they're very different skills. Um, in the same way, and I, I mean, I, I think of that often when you know when you watch the Oscars and you yeah. have these, you know, these Academy Award winning actors who can't read an auto cue. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they're just sort of like, 
our next performer is. I'm like, you are an actor. <laughs> like, there's a very yeah. different skill, right? It's a very, very different skill. Um, yeah. To, to sort of be in that moment, in that d- distracted thing where you haven't rehearsed really and you, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah they're, they're very different worlds. But no, I, I had a similar experience um, years ago when I was touring. Um, we, we met up with um, friends of, of one of the, the, the members of our, of our group uh, and he was a freestyle rapper. Yeah, and we yeah. we hung out for a day, and you know he came and saw our show, uh, which was kind of funny because it was a children's um, sort of sing and dance show. Uh, but but he came along, and we we, we hung out for a day, and then he took us out. Um, he was performing that night, and they they had a bit of a rap battle going on. Yeah. and at that stage, I was a little bit skeptical. I was like, really? Come <laughs> on, like you can't you can't really yeah. just yeah rap it up. Fast. Like you can't be making that up on the spot. And then he got up there and, you know, they gave him a word and yeah. he started and, and then he incorporated things that we did that day. Oh. And, and he even kind of dropped in, you know, like I'm, something was, I'm hanging out with, uh, you know, with these guys, oh, from, no. from this company. And he, you know, he dropped the name of the company and he, um, and he mentioned us and some of the things we did that day. And, and I was like, oh, that's real. Like that's. Yeah. yeah that can't that's be totally improvised. Like, legitimate. <laughs> they yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. can't be yeah. scripted. Yeah, no, that's right. And that's and that's the same with things. Yeah, like so improvisation and playing, um, you know, playing theatre sports and um, and those sorts of things. And um, uh, uh, yeah, it's probably yeah. a little aside. I don't know if this is getting off track. Feel free to edit this out. But, um, <laughs> oh, just, no, keeping it in. You know, yeah, being, yeah. being on being on, camp, <laughs> uh, you know, being on youth camps and things like yeah. that or, or other times when people say like, you know, what are we going to do tonight? I don't know. Do you want to do some theatre sports? And everyone yeah. would look at me like, do some theatre sports? I'm like, mm, no. Nah. <laughs> and, and people would be really surprised. They'd be like, but why not? I'm like, it's really hard. And yeah, yeah. like the, the clue is in the word sport. Like yeah. there are there are rules, there, there's technique, yeah. there's method, there's all this stuff. What what looks like people just kind of walking up and making things up that are just somehow luckily very funny and creative yeah it's actually a really really hard thing um you need to that, wheel that blackboard in that you had and then say right, yeah, right. we're like, gonna have to start through at the beginning here that's yeah. right we've got a lot of work to do before we get <laughs> yeah. to that um that's you right. know there's 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 a lot of craft um mm. it's, and i guess if you, it's, if you, i was about to say if, you, if you've never done impro you don't know how terrifyingly skilled those guys on who whose line is it anyway are. Oh, oh they're they're just masters and you know and yeah. the easier it looks the the more amazing you realize they are um mm-hmm. i remember out of high school what while i was at acting school one of my mates from high school we caught up we hadn't seen each other for a while and um you know we we're just catching up and saying what are we doing and he'd gone off to um to study being a chef and i was doing acting and um and it was really interesting because he sort of said oh but dave like you were always a good actor. Like what, what do you, what do you need to go to acting school for? Like you, you were always good. Um, yeah. Isn't that like, it's just silly. It's just like, what is it like a bunch of tricks or, or what? And I said, well, you were always a pretty good cook. Like when we'd go yeah. out to your place, you made wicked dumplings, man. Um, <laughs> what are you learning at chef school? What, like how to cut onions better? Like it's just yeah. tricks, right? Mm. Um, mm. And, and he sort of paused. I thought, oh, I've not really thought about it like that. Um, you know, mm. and, and it's true. Like, I'm I'm skilled to a certain degree. I can go into my my fridge and and pantry and kind of pick out random ingredients, and I can cook something you know from scratch, utilizing what's there without necessarily following a recipe. Um, mm. But I'm pretty sure a uh, you know a Michelin star chef is going to be better at that than me. Um, yeah. Because they've just got more tricks, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and and I think the tricks are that's what we call craft. Yeah, and they work hard, don't they? They work oh, hard on those things. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah. and you don't see that side of it. Like you don't see uh, people studying and understanding that in the background every night, thinking through new skills or new new techniques or practicing things. And then you see them. Like, yeah, they're yeah. they're mind blowing when you see them, but you don't see what all the work that's gone into. Oh, absolutely. Doing and that. even yeah. and even simple things, and 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 some of it's even just you know just basic rehearsal stuff, but you know, rehearsing your moves, but there's even things like, you know, dexterity. You can't drop something on stage. Like you can't. Um, so mm. even simple things like I've, I've got a scene in the, the, the play I'm preparing at the moment where I've, I need to take a, a letter that's in an envelope. I've got to open the envelope. I've got to take out the letter. I've got to fold it up and put it back in. Now that's a straightforward <laughs> thing to do. I know how to do that. Yeah. But I need to get it right every night. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I actually need to spend some time with an envelope, with a letter, 
and I need to practice opening it up, folding it up and putting it away again so that I can be confident that I'm not going to just drop it or it's going to fall off or, or something happens and that, that distracts me and then I lose my spot because this letter didn't do what I thought it was what it was going to do oh, yeah. um you know so even the even those sort of the, the the technicality of getting things right on stage um which is especially terrifying i mean film you can take a thousand shots you know yeah 20 takes yeah do yeah. another take do another take, <laughs> do another take like we'll get it and you only need to get it right once and the camera yeah. needs to get it that's it and you're done um where theater you you need to be able to hit your mark and and hit the moment and get the lines right and do all the moves and you've got to get all of them right every night yeah um, and roll with the punches if something goes wrong and and oh, it's I, different I, it's different yeah. to movies where you've got people who go in with the intention of improvising lines and perhaps the director gives them the freedom to do that in theater in most plays i wouldn't say all plays but in most plays you need to follow the text don't you so yes absolutely absolutely yeah and and Actually, that might, might be a, a funny little connector back to the sort of faith stuff. Mm. Um, but I think that some of the some of the things I learned through acting and especially, um, you know, learning how to read and interpret a script um, really served me well when I went to Bible college and started learning about um, yeah. you know hermeneutics and and biblical interpretation and all that and all that sort of stuff. And you know, just this need we we must go back to the text. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah I get that. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely get that. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a bit of a pedant when it comes to the words. You know, yeah. it, it always infuriates me when, um, because uh, you do, you do get some performers, you do get some actors who develop an idea of their character apart from the script, and then you end up with these odd conversations where they say things like, "I'm just not sure my character would do that," or, yeah. you know, "I'm struggling that I don't think my character would say that." And I'm like. But they do. Like, right? like, <laughs> I see it right here. But yeah. they do. Um, and, and you might not like that. And you yeah. as a human being might be struggling with that. But your character totally does this. And you need to figure out why and how they're doing that. Yep. Without why you understand the character. And, and, and without, you know, cheating it and sort of going, oh, I think I'll make it a joke. I'm like, I don't think it is a joke. Like, it's you know so you, you can't undermine your own character you need to be yeah. informed, and we must be informed by the text because people have people have created that you know writers and storytellers have crafted the words deliberately and important uh and and so mm -hmm. we, we need to honor that and respect that and uh and tell the story that that they've imagined um mm -hmm. and that a director is is working to bring to life you know that, mm -hmm. I, for me that's that's the that's the work of the actor is to um, is to is to honor honor the story, serve the story, and mm. uh, and and you do that with the guidance of of a director and and the other members mm. of your ensemble. Mm. David, just I want it to is, really uh, oh, you go lucky, yeah. I was just about to say it is funny to think about how that sort of then feeding into that process of going back. You know, someone we, we from a Christian circles we always hear about oh the text's really important, the words are really important, but having having someone coming into that. I know words are important before I got here. <laughs> yes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is just yeah. the same idea. Well, and there, there are a number of things like that. The other one was I remember when my mentor sat me down and he said, like, we, we sort of need to talk about, um, you know, the theology of sin and, and understand that, you know, humanity is essentially broken and, and we're all like that. And, you know, a lot of people think, you know, want to, you know, a, a sort of a, a, an optimistic secular humanism would say that, you know, people are, are inherently good, mm. um, but actually you know, while human beings made in the image of God with, with all the potential of, um, that, that, that brings, there's a brokenness there. And, and we, all of us have, have something in that. And I was like, mm. yeah, what's your point? Uh, <laughs> and he was like, oh, most people want to sort of push back on that at some point. I was like, I have plumbed the depths of my soul. I have played some really dark and disturbing characters and uncomfortably come to the conclusion of, yeah, I got that in me. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I have no problem um, admitting that humanity is is broken uh, to, yeah. to a certain degree at, at every level. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, Dave, that kind of touches on the question which we kind of referred to earlier, which I wanted to ask, which is, is there ever any kind of red lines for you? Uh, I, I have to be honest, this this is something that comes up for me as well. So I've, I'm fascinated to hear your take on these things. Like, are there any red lines for you? You go, well, like, I wouldn't want to play that character because that's morally there's some really things i struggle with there or yeah. this this film that i've been asked to do or, or play 
I don't know, I just don't know about that kind of thing. Do you ever do you ever have a problem with any of those things or or is there a certain thinking you have around something where you go, hmm, you do a double take on that? Yeah, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, it, look, it's it is a really it's it's a really tricky one, um, but but really important. And I think the first point um is is a question of conscience. Mm. Um and, and you really shouldn't go against your conscience. Um mm. I think and I, and I think that's true for, for everyone <laughs> for anyone um but but then i think there's a for for the christian person there's there's a really significant part of that because as christians we want you know our consciences to be um informed as we immerse ourselves in god's mm. word and uh draw close to god in prayer mm. we actually you know we 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 trust that our conscience is being formed in that and and the spirit of god will uh, will will guide us and speak to us through those mm, deeper feelings mm. and things. So it's really important to pay, to pay attention to that and um, to not just fob off um, a prompt of, of your conscience, mm. um, which, which is especially easy to do if, you know, it looks like a really fun show or my friends are going to be in this or it's a really mm. great part or something. It's really easy to kind of go, uh, but then, then you're, you'd be divided within yourself um, and you'd, yeah. you'd be making compromises. And so that, that's really important. So I, and I guess that's a, you know, that's a bit of a preamble to say there's, there's not a straight line that you can draw through every individual's heart. Um, mm. the, the line is going to look different for different people and yeah. at different times in their lives. Um, and, yeah. and that's really important um, as well. So for me, broadly speaking, the principle that I apply um, is that, we serve the story. Mm. Um, the actor serves the story. The characters themselves serve the story. Um, you, you, you can't have the parable of the good Samaritan without the, the robbers and thieves who beat a man nearly to death. Mm. Um, mm. So, you know, if, if, if mm. you sanitize that out and say, Oh no, 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 we never, we don't talk about robbers and thieves cause that's bad. Mm. Then you, you have no story. Um, mm. You know, so, and, and I think as Christians, you know, we have a very truncated story of Easter um, that doesn't actually make any sense if we sanitize mm. everything and and um, and refuse to engage with um, with the idea of violence um, and and storytelling uh, that in, that involves that. So that that's my first principle: is um, what's the story? Um, and to sort of put it grossly simplistically, um, you know, I, I would play the devil in a show that was life-giving and glorified God. Let's say, you know, mm. you know even, even frame it that bluntly, you know, that mm. it, it's rarely that straightforward. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play Christ in a story that undermined the gospel or denigrated mm. um, mm. that, that story. Um, yeah. You know, so they're, they're the kind of simple extreme answers yeah and you jump into the gray world in the middle where yeah. you're actually left going actually i don't know um yeah what's the know? message of the story rather than like what's the character doing yes um that, that's right always so what what is the story and that and that that doesn't mean the story has to be a nice neat and tidy tied up with a bow there's a happy ending and you know everyone lives happily ever after i, I actually like melancholic things i i mm. like messed stories that kind of leave you going what is that about because i think that's when people do ask those questions what is that about <laughs> like what um yeah. you know it, it, it's in a place of, of being disturbed which is one of the reasons why i think um i actually don't i don't like i don't think i like any christian movies i i, I just don't like them i think they're sanitized i think they tell the story that the converted want to hear and it reinforces a sort of narrative that that they want to know and want to believe that in the end everyone gets saved you know or that in the end you know the the bad works out for the good um yeah you actually, feel like the script writers are stacking the deck yeah they, they, they really are because they're controlling the universe right um mm. and so where i think a lot of secular stories or, or people uh, you know who, who are really deeply struggling with the complexity of a broken world and why mm. do human beings do what they do without feeling like they need to wrap it up in a not nice package in the end 
Mm. I find them to be much more satisfying stories because they leave you, they, they force an audience to say, and, and I think for me, that sort of resonates more with Jesus. You know, when Jesus tells a parable and then he says, you got ears, listen, mm. Like, mm. you figure it out. Mm. People are like, mm. what, what does that parable mean? He's like, you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. you, are, you tell me. That is entirely <laughs> unsatisfying. Yeah, you do the work. <laughs> you do that you do the work like uh, i'm the storyteller you, now yeah. you do the work that's the point of a good story um is is not to necessarily make us feel better that everything's going to be okay but it's actually to reflect on our own humanity and so yeah. a, a story that does that um i, I want to be a part of um mm. which does sometimes mean um yeah playing pretty complicated and dark and dark characters um and and then and then there's the other side of it that's more about you know the activities and the words and things like that so at the moment i'm um you know playing a character who um who drops an f-bomber a couple of times and um takes the lord's name in vain a couple of times and um that one for me is less of an issue um simply because he's a believable character Mm. and some people do talk like that Mm. so there it is and i find as a christian I mean, I have friends who talk like that and sometimes I talk like that. Um, <laughs> and so, and I find that I can be friends with people who might even speak in a way that I find disagreeable. Um, and I, I find I can befriend them and love them. Mm. Um, I, I don't feel that I must reject them um, and censor them from my lives. So in that sense, I can play this character because I can, I don't know. I can be his friend. Like I can get along with him just fine. <laughs> um, just as he is the way he speaks and, 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 and that's okay. Yeah. I, I actually found um, for me doing theater roles and playing with that question, I found sometimes it actually exposed some of my hypocrisies. Yeah. Um, in that uh, there, I remember there was times when I, I did a theater role, I was in a show called Victor Victoria, which was great. And I opened it for me. Um, and I remember struggling with the issues of, yeah, how do I feel about playing certain characters? But actually, kind of going, now hang on, I have absolutely no problem playing a serial killer. What are the other? Why are that? Why are there different kind of characters which I'm suddenly ambiguous about? And realizing there was a bit of double speak going on in my head of like, why am I okay playing this character but not this character? Yes. And yes. You know, yeah, and and I think uh, I think that's right. And I, I I think you know yeah, playing those characters, being part of those stories, immersing yourself in that story, you know you. You must confront yourself. You're always, you know, always confronting yourself um, and and checking yourself on, you know, why does that bother me? Why is that so hard? Why am I struggling with this? What's what's going on for me in this? Um, mm. Which I think is an incredibly rich experience. Oh, um, definitely, yeah. And then and then there's another aspect to it for me, which is really important because I am something of a, um, I guess, a public figure, uh, not just in the arts, but but in the church. And so I need to be mindful <laughs> that I'm not. Um, being unhelpful for other people um Mm. and so there are some characters that i think would be unhelpful for people to see me play um weirdly jekyll and hyde was not uh was not one even though you know there was a scene in that where i i beat the bishop to death with my um with my walking stick which was uh, you know, strangely cathartic. Um, but uh... <laughs> that play is not that. That's okay. <laughs> it's not okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. But uh, when I did um, Little Shop of Horrors a few years ago, uh, I played Seymour, uh, which was fine. Uh, people were saying, "Oh, you'd be great at the dentist," and I said, "Oh, like the dentist is such a crazily great character. He's a." a total psychopath if you don't know the story he's a dentist he became a dentist because he likes inflicting pain on people um he gets he gets <laughs> i haven't on, seen it yeah, have yeah. You know, he gets high on happy gas and tortures people basically right. um that side of it actually d- didn't really bother me but um he uh is is physically violent and abusive to his girlfriend um <clears throat> and for me i thought no i don't I, I don't want to be that character and I I don't want people who you know who who trust me um and and, and I need to be a safe person for I mm. I think it would be unhelpful for them to see me be able to be that character mm. um 
and I and so I tread carefully there. Technically, like, personally, I, I don't actually have any qualms playing the character, but I think it would be unhelpful for yeah. um, for other people to see me be able to play that character. So it would be fine as, as long as no one you knew came. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> And and then of course then there's the issue of uh, you know I have I have played romantic leads um, and um, you know kissing someone who is not my wife and uh, kissing them quite passionately um, is is a thing that's something that um, Beth and I have always um, kind of worked out and in some ways it was in some ways not an issue because um, we were dating while I was going through acting school so we like that it, this has always been a part of my life and therefore our life together so it wasn't this suddenly this new thing that beth was like what do you mean you what you pretend to be someone you're not and what <laughs> um you know how does that work that's weird. <laughs> yeah which i know yeah. you know can can sincerely be a um a real point of um of tension for for people in fact you mentioned paris um earlier lucky that that was um you know the the young male lover lead um and uh uh, yeah, we kissed a lot in that. There was a lot, and uh, but for me, it was um, so one one of the ways that I that I handle that is always. Uh, I mean, there's a whole process through the um, uh, through the rehearsal period where you you don't you don't kiss on the first rehearsal. <laughs> you know, that's that's uh, just a, a well known rule. Um, you don't do it. You you sort of mark it. You awkwardly look at each other and go, "This is where we would kiss," um, and then you, you you move on. And then it might become a sort of a lean in, and you get closer and closer. And then as it gets closer, um, then you, you, you say, okay, mm. let, we'll, we'll do the kiss now. Um, and I find out, I'll always sit down um, with, uh, with the person I'm acting with and say, this, this is my process. Um, and and I, is this helpful for you? I said, we won't kiss, you know, for, for weeks and weeks. So you, we don't even have to worry about it. Don't have to think about it. Let's work out the character. Let's do the other stuff first so that we're not thinking, are we kissing tonight? No, we're not. We're not. Um, so don't worry about it. I'm I'm never going to spring on you a kiss, you know, in the moment because I was just so taken by my character. Rubbish, have control. Like, you know, mm. that you can't do that. Um, I said, it will always sit down first, talk it through and determine together when the rehearsal is, when we will first do do the kiss i said um, one, once we've done the kiss and we'll always do the kiss with the director um and it will be essentially choreographed i said i will never change the choreography of what we agree on it's it's a dance and so it's you know where where i put my hands how long we kiss for you know how we kiss won't change so that we can both be confident that there's nothing else going on here yeah and and we need to know this dance and we need to both feel safe and and i always say if, if there's anything that i'm doing that makes you feel uncomfortable that you don't like that it is not okay immediately mm. tell me or tell the director and get the director to tell me um because it's the last thing i want to do is to make someone feel um you know unsafe or, or uncertain of what what the circumstances are um and so you know having, having done all of that when it back to Paris we, we did our we did our stuff and then I at uh, one of the performances uh, one of the earlier performances uh, I met my leading ladies um, uh, betrothed <laughs> they, were, they were engaged and uh, I met him and and for me you know it was I, I, I it was foolish I hadn't even thought of it it, it just wasn't even remotely in the front of my mind I have no you know sort of romantic affections for this woman um lovely as she was is um but i met him and said oh great how are you going and he was like yeah good he was like oh, yeah gosh you guys uh you guys kiss a bit don't you and i said oh yeah i i guess we do i don't know i don't know how many times 14 <laughs> oh, he was he like, not that i'm counting or anything yeah that's right. right 14 times i was like <laughs> Uh, okay okay and then i just sort of <laughs> stayed out of his arms reach <laughs> just in case yeah but uh you know so but but that that's part of my process and then always 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 if i'm going to audition for a show that i know is a romantic lead where there's a you know the potential for me um kissing uh another character on stage i'll always talk to beth first and she has the right of veto um if she says no i'm not comfortable with that i won't even audition um and if at any point beth 
pulls the pin, then I'm out. No questions asked. Beth doesn't mm. have to have to justify all that. It's enough for Beth just to say, I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Then I won't. And that, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And, we, and we've always had that. We've always had that agreement. And I keep Beth up to speed of where we're at in the rehearsal process. Yeah. Um, because, and that, that's part of my own safeguarding as well, because I sort of think if, if I think, eh, maybe I won't tell Beth that I just, you know, that, that we did the kiss tonight. Then I think, why wouldn't I tell Beth? Mm. Yeah. Why don't I want to tell Beth? What's behind <laughs> that? Why is mm. that hesitation there? Anything that's going to prompt that hesitation is probably not good. So mm. then I definitely need to tell Beth. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that, that, that's how I, how I manage those sorts of, those sorts of things. Yeah. So yeah, first of all, conscience, then, um, you know, what's the nature of the story and, um, and then the particulars of any individual activity or action, um, as, as you said, Lockie, I got to check myself for hypocrisy of why I wouldn't do that. Um, and mm. then determine whether I'm comfortable, um, doing that. It's mm. a really, really, mm. really multifaceted, amazing answer, Dave. Yeah, um, oh, yeah I'll, I'll hand it to Lockie. You've got a question that, uh, about the theatre world as well, Lockie, actually. I think. Well, before I asked, I, th I thought it just as a um, thing you mentioned, Dave, that you're sort of saying, I don't know if you know Little Shop of Horrors. Um, I actually met my wife on the uh, the set of Little Shop of Horrors down oh. uh, Lunga Theatre once. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <Long ago. laughs> nice, so, nice. See, I have, to, we I, have to, I have to see it now. I'm the only one who hasn't seen it yet. I, I know it involves a plant, and isn't there a Frankenfurter or something? Is that right? No, that's, uh, a, no, that's Rocky Horror Picture Show. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Got a different show. one. Yeah. yeah, that's very good show. Different hey, <laughs> yeah, Little right. Sh Little Shop of Horrors is a um uh, no yeah so Little Shop of Horrors is a um uh an, a plant that's actually an alien uh, from outer space um who uh, can speak but ah. who lives off blood and so <laughs> the... carnivorous plant grants I've wishes. A, I've you... got a few of those in this house somewhere. I'm pretty yeah, sure. And he, yeah, and and uh, you know, down and outer guy. Um, who was working in a plant shop that was going broke, um, becomes famous because this exotic plant. Right. Um, and so all his dreams come true. He becomes famous. He gets the girl, uh, gets a lot of money. But in order to maintain that, he needs to start finding more blood, which means getting oh. people and feeding them to the plant. And so right. It's a, uh, <laughs> I see. It's, but, it, but it's all... <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 all in the in in the in the context of being a a sort of B grade schlock horror. So it's oh, very yeah. funny. It's really it's camp. It's uh, it's yep. it's great. Like you know, <laughs> people are being eaten by a plant. Like it's not. <laughs> Like Day of the Triffids, but on stage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Hollywood movie version, um, Steve Martin actually played the sadistic dentist. So oh, wow. <laughs> it's oh, great. He, he would have been he would have been good at that. Oh, yeah. and a fantastic cameo by Bill Murray in the dentist. Yeah. Chair. Oh, it was so so full of good. That was so one. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll loan you the loan you the DVD, John. DG. Uh, so yeah, question. Um, and it's interesting. We sort of touched on it in a few different places. Um, Sometimes the theatre world and the church world do have very little overlap. Um, and we sort of talked about increasingly, so there's a bit of a hostility that's grown up in the last few years that sort of meant that gap sort of grown. And certainly you do get, um, you know, as you've said, there's, there's sort of stealth um, figures within the, um, within the acting world that will be there but sort of keep a low profile. Yeah. Um, but there probably are times when um, you might find yourself as the one Christian in a crowd. And certainly, Dave, you were saying before, you know, the second thing people ask, you, you're finding yourself saying, I'm an Anglican minister. I, I would love to have a video reel of the facial reactions you've had <laughs> to, to that answer. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's um, happened a few times when I've when I've been doing a show and um, people find out I'm a minister. And oddly, you know, and, and you get that, you get some of the, the regular responses where I'm now the person that people apologise to when they swear which I don't yeah. understand. I just never have, you know, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll drop an F-bomb and be like, oh, sorry. I'm like, oh, I don't know why you owe me an apology. <laughs> I, I just, uh, especially since I, I you know, I, I grew up working in my dad's butcher shop. Like an F-bomber is really not a, <laughs> like a shocking thing for me. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, very much part of the world that I grew up in. So, yeah. um, no, and 
and and and I'll be honest, uh, you know, swearing as a as a sort of uh, a, a side topic, I guess. Um, actually, swearing doesn't really bother me. Um, I think words are words, and words can be used uh, powerfully to build people up or to tear people down. And I think mm. swearing isn't necessarily mm. a negative thing. Um, I always said to I've, I've to um, to teenage. Uh, children and I've always said to my girls to start growing up um, you know I, I would rather that you swear um, but be kind than never swear and be cruel um, so mm. you know and, and, and I think you, you can you can never say a swear word but use words to rip people apart um, mm. so yeah anyway that that's just as an aside swearing doesn't really bother me um, but I did have I did have exactly that moment once when we were um, I was doing a, a show it was um, Pirates of Penzance I was playing Frederick and uh, we'd, we'd had a bit of recasting. It was a bit of a mess and, and a, a long story, but we had a new Mabel come in one night and um, she, the, the night that she came in, I was already in rehearsal and I was in the middle of a scene and uh, she was on the side of stage and she was talking to one of, one of my friends uh, who's also a, a Christian in, in the arts and, uh, and they were mutual friends as well. And she sort of went across and she said, is that, that's Dave? And um uh, our mutual friend was like yeah yeah that, that stayed there and uh and she said is it true that he's like an anglican priest and, and our friend said yeah yeah, yeah that, that, that that's right and she was like oh no oh i don't know how i feel about that what if i what if i swear in front of him or something like that and then right at that moment um i i completely miffed a line uh, and then responded by dropping an <laughs> F-bomb uh, and just going, ah, yeah, you know, stupid. Ah, sorry, 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 everyone. Uh, you know, can we can we do that again? Um, and uh, our mutual friend just uh, turned, to, turned to this uh, girl playing Mabel and just said, I don't think that's going to be a problem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, think <it's> okay. <laughs> I think he's going to be okay with that. Um, and it was great. Afterwards, our, you know, our mutual friend came up and she said, I just have the funniest thing to tell you. She said, you have no idea how perfect your timing was in that moment and, just, <laughs> and how that just immediately built trust <laughs> with this person. <laughs> you know, the fact that I can't hold my tongue uh, turns out to be a really, uh, you know, a, a, a yeah. great gift. In the moment. <laughs> um, so yeah, look, there are definitely times like that. Um, I, I think one of the one of my most challenging ones was was doing a show it, right in the middle of the um, that the political maelstrom that was the same sex marriage call it a debate plebiscide mess um, whatever it was um, and 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 making friends with um, uh, with a young man who. Uh, is uh, same-sex attracted and um, and an atheist. Um, and I remember, actually, I think it might have been Little Shop of Horrors. Um, uh, we had these rehearsals where, you know, I was just on all the time. And so I was always busy at rehearsals. Um, and there was this one moment where I was doing the little bits of, it was a really bitsy scene. So I sort of I'd jump on, do a bit, jump off. Um, and then he came up and he said, is it true that you're a minister? I'm like, yes, it is. Oh, just a sec. Go on, do my thing. Like, right, cool. I've got like some a, questions. Like a comedy, you know? yeah. That's it right. was a bit, and he said, like, you know, I've, I've got some questions. I was like, okay, great. What, what, what are your questions? And, you know, he, I think he, he started with something like, um, uh, and now what was it? He said, you know, Jesus as a man existed, did crazy things, all of that, fine. No problem with. He said, but angels, virgin birth, come on, really? And I was like, Great question. Just a sec. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, that came back. I said, you know, really great question. Um, I said, I will point you to Luke's gospel where Luke introduce, you know, introduces his gospel by saying, I'm deliberately drawing up a good historical account based on eyewitnesses. Um, and uh, that, that's his intro. And uh, he's very clear about that. He's very deliberate about that. Um, mm. he, he's making it known yeah. what it is. Neck minute, angels, uh, you know, and, and virgin birth. <laughs> So, um, I, I, I just said, love how you said next minute angels. <laughs> that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happens in Luke's gospel. Right. Um, and then I yeah. said, and yeah. then I said, I don't have a problem with that. So I said, that's your problem. You, you, you yeah. need to reconcile how Luke can say that and then show that. Yeah. yeah. Cause I don't have a problem with it. That's your problem. And, and, and the question also of if these things actually happened, what would it look like if a doctor was writing an account about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. Um, and so that that was really that was really wonderful. Um, and and I just I totally left him hanging on that, and he was like, "That's really good." Um, <laughs> and, and then 
and then you know our, our conversations got a bit richer and deeper as we got to know each other mm. um and he said i really do want to have a have a talk with you about same-sex marriage and those sorts of things um and i said yeah cool i'm really open to that i said but not yet i said let's let let's build a friendship and and trust first um mm. and, and and so we did and and he was fantastic he was really respectful and 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 genuinely curious you know he um an intelligent man um he he understood you know qu quite deeply um a classical christian view anyway so he, he was not mm. expecting anything um radical from me or anything um but uh but it was very interesting and so we, we kept putting it off we kept putting it off but we said at some point we'll have this conversation and so we did one night after a show there was a you know after cast party back at someone's house and um uh, uh somehow i don't know how but word had got around and people were like are you really going to talk to him about same-sex marriage and i said yeah i, th I think we are and they're like can, can we watch <laughs> i guess i don't know why do you yeah and people were like can we listen to your conversation sure and uh, and so we did. So we, we went outside and people were like, oh, it's happening. It's happening. And everyone sort of sat around <laughs> while he and I sat. And Murphy, just, it's a deal. Yeah, we just we just had a really civil conversation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he he asked questions and it, it started with him saying, you know, this is my understanding of a class, you know, the, the classical kind of Christian understanding of of marriage and, and sexuality. Is that right? And I was like, yeah, that that, that that's pretty right. Um and he was like, right. <laughs> and so then, you know, I asked him some questions and, and, and we talked some more. And then really our conversation was about essentially, can we get along? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we'd already sort of been living that. And we'd already demonstrated that. Yeah. Yeah. I th like, I think so. I think, I think we have mutual mm. affection yeah. and trust for each other. And we, we probably disagree on, on some things, but that's okay. Um, and, yeah. and, that, and that was sort of it and it, it was a bit underwhelming i think for, for people who were just like no oh, you know no oh, it wasn't a fight yeah. um but it was also i think it was, it was actually really reassuring for people at that time because all of the discourse they'd heard was was fraught and um mm -hmm. and, and divisive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and we could have a, a a really vulnerable conversation um and and listen to each other and and, and challenge each other and acknowledge like yeah i don't know i, I that's hard I, I don't know the answer to that question i don't know how that yeah. plays out i, I don't know, mm. really know what that means so and i'm okay with that so yeah so it's it, it's an interesting thing um being in that but yeah it you, you said lucky you know the the arts and acting in particular and the theater are often um a venn diagram that doesn't cross um <laughs> and i think that's true which is really odd because the church was such a patron to the arts Mm. um yeah not, not too long ago in human history um you know e even in australia go go around to country towns and a, a church hall is usually a town hall is usually a theater um it's usually mm. got a stage mm. where people would come and perform and put on pantomimes and um the community was a part of that um mm. it does make me sad that we've we've lost that uh, we've lost a lot of that Dave, um, there, there, there was a missionary that used to work at, at our, well, he used to work at our church, but it seemed like he did. I mean, he was amazing. He was about 99. Uh, he had, his family had some association with Bible College of SA, you know, where which we all know. Uh, but even at 99, they said, hey, would you give us a missionary talk about what you did? Yeah. And he was so animated. I, I He was like someone half his age i i've never seen anything like it like in my entire life i, I still yeah, wow. have never seen anything like it he was walking around he's it, he was like a different guy he was so excited to share and one of the things he shared was here is i used to have a like a whiteboard I feel like your blackboard you know yeah, yeah i used to have yeah. a whiteboard and i used to draw for people who didn't understand the language of, about jesus and stuff and i was sitting there <laughs> going he was doing like I wouldn't call it cartooning, but he was doing visual art to share about Jesus. Yeah, wow. And to tell people about Jesus and and to to teach about Jesus and and share. And I thought, why? Yeah. Why yeah. isn't this happening more? You know, like this is. I mean, it, like anything, like in in the arts, you could you could pick out anywhere in the arts. You go, why isn't this happening more? You know. Yes. Yes. Um, just before I take that further. My laptop is about to go flat. I need to very quickly grab a charging cable. 
Can I do that? Yeah. So it's, a, 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 sorry for making up something you probably have to edit. Dave, you have to say, you have to say, I'll be right back. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be right back. That's and right. Don't talk about, and don't talk about me while I'm gone because I've still got my earpiece and I can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> see, see, Lockie, we, we're going to be on theme here. We're going to work on our improv. Okay. So, oh. <laughs> so lucky lucky it's really you, hard. You, you you've got to think of a scene and we're both going to be in it and a scenario uh, <laughs> off you go uh, we are uh, on the bus <laughs> we're on the bus and, yeah <laughs> and, who are you who are you and who am i um you are the driver and i am a that's a, we're not good at this. <laughs> it's not the movie am, Speed, is it? It's not Speed. I'm not, for I'm not some in... reason, it has a bear with them. <laughs> a, a what? A bear? Yeah, a bear. I want. I want to. I want to get my bear on the on the bus. It doesn't say okay. legally anything that I'm allowed to have a bear. So uh, what's what's the problem here? <laughs> All right. Okay. So we've got one minute to do this while Dave gets ready. So, uh, okay. So I'm the bus driver. You're trying to get on with a bear. Okay. I'm just uh, wondering if I can uh, grab a ticket. Um, and do I need one for for, for Boris here? Uh, do you have any kind of special seatbelt for that creature? Uh, no, I gen generally just put him in the wheelchair area. <laughs> You're both. I mean, I can okay, I didn't expect that. <laughs> oh, I did, oh, I didn't expect that. Help me, Dave. Help me. He's putting it in the wheelchair section. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't get ahead of yourself. You can't finish the story uh, preempt. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I, 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 we'll get back to Dave, but I'll, I'll, I've, I've got to quickly think of my my retort to to this particular <laughs> well, circumstance. As he, as right. he's thinking with that, thinking with that, Dave. Um, I I have to say I, I do remember in the middle of um when uh, some of the same sex marriage stuff was quite vigorous. Uh, someone I knew in the theatre had actually sort of reached out to me and was was basically saying, can you give me any reason why someone would in good conscience um, vote um, no, you know? Um, and, I, and I remember at the time I was like dead keen to have the conversation, but I was just flat out caught with a bunch of different things and it was going to be like 48 hours before I could get back to him. Mm -hmm. And eventually when I finally got back and I was saying, okay, now I can respond to this, he's like, oh, it's okay, I... I Caught up with actually asked someone else and I'm like, all oh, right, who who did you end up talking to? He's like, oh, someone put me under um, Dave McGillivray. And I'm like, oh, thank good. <laughs> good <to> see <laughs> much better choice than me. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a I had a lot of conversations, but and and also at that time, I I wanted to be even handed with things as well. And I had a um a dear friend who who was um you know he's very very uh, progressive politically and um uh, and and all that and. Uh, he he was you know getting very caught up in it all and and he said the you know that that conservative um you know christian narrative and the conservative political line is doing great harm to children and he said we've got to you know we've got to think of the kids um and i said look i completely agree but can we think of all the kids and he said mm. what do you mean and i said I, I'm, I'm working in an anglican school and i've got christian kids who are just keeping their heads down and they are scared that people will find out they're Christians because what the media is saying and, and what the, um, uh, you know, the, the sort of far left narrative is saying is that if someone is a Christian, they are a conservative and they oppose same sex marriage and they hate you and, and, and they mm. wish you harm. Um, and, and I said, there, there are Christian kids who, are not able to acknowledge their own faith for fear of retribution. I said, and even more than that, there are kids in churches who are genuinely grapp grappling with this question themselves. Um, that they've they've mm. got they've got gay friends at school. Um, they 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 love them dearly, um, and and yet they're that you know they're they're not really getting um, you know this. Uh, you know this tr traditional um, perspective um, on on marriage and sexuality. Yeah, and the media and, says we're enemies, and they've and they've been brought up with that. Yeah, and the, and the world's telling us we, apparently we're supposed to hate each other now. And which which do I choose? Do I choose my faith or do I choose my friends? Um, and and I wanted to say, can we create a safe space where we can have that conversation where we're not choosing between those two things? Um, because we shouldn't be. Um, 
and yeah so I, I was like yeah sure think of the children but can we think of all the children and can that actually be honest um was w was really important to me and um you know i was I'm very blessed i've got um you know truly good friends um and so you know even you know this friend who was was very you know really passionate and really caught up in it he did he did give pause and it was actually a, it was about a month later when I, I saw him again and he said you know i've thought about that so much and he said i've i'm 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 working really hard to now to also correct some of my friends to say, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, that's not helping. Sometimes, you know, you you're you're having an impact that you're not intending. We need to be mindful of that. And I was like, thank you so much. I said, because I'm doing the same thing in the sort of conservative, you know, the conservative church world. I'm like, guys, you do know how that sounds outside your bubble world? Probably not. Can we just, you know, yeah. tem temper this language a bit and be and be really really careful? Um, yeah. So. Um, Anyway, that's a red button issue. Um, <laughs> this is a, but, uh, yeah, so and look, that that was probably one of the one of the most difficult times, I think. Um, but then also a, a really significant time in the arts because I think that's when um, I did find, you know, because I I couldn't keep my head down. I I couldn't hide. Mm. Um, that that was mm. that was never an option for me, um, and so I, I I had to you know I had to live that out authentically um mm. but also really carefully um and and generously so I, I i tried to do that as best as i could um uh, across the board and so yeah i, I think i i think i, I have i have a, a lot of people's trust which is a, a huge privilege but a burden um as well and i, I try to mm. manage that um I try to manage that well um and in honor it yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I certainly have no desire to grandstand and, you know, become a commentator of, of, of any sort. Like I've, uh, I'd, I'd rather not. Um, but but if, if people want to talk and they and they think I might have some ideas that are use, yeah, useful or at least mildly interesting, um, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy to share them. But um, yeah. but, you know, and, and I always sort of catch that when, you know, when people ask me what I think. I'm like, you know, what I think isn't worth a fistful of beans. But, uh, you know, if if you want to hear, I'm happy to share, but really it's about working mm. things out together and, and, and thinking things through deeply and earnestly. So, yeah. yeah. I remember Dave, I had a similar situation. I'll, I'll be really quick on this one, but uh, I was at university and they, um, someone came in and said, Oh, uh, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do a values discussion. And uh, you know, she almost jokingly kind of said, who, who thinks that, you know, um, sex before marriage is, you know, not something we should do or whatever kind of thing. And I thought to myself, <laughs> I'm going to be the only one in this room who's going to stand up and I'm going to look very countercultural here, but I can't help but not stand up mm. and just go, this is one of these moments where I will ask the Lord's help <laughs> and share why I believe, mm. you know. And the amazing thing that came out of that was someone actually coming up to me afterwards. There was there was actually one other person that stood up, but... Uh, you know, I was like a single guy, like 20 and like in a uni that was like 80% women. So yeah. I even more of a focus on, you know, this guy thinks very differently. But I had this someone mm -hmm. come up to me afterwards and say, mm -hmm. I was so glad that was someone here from another perspective who could share why they thought about yeah. th this way uh, from a faith yeah. perspective. And I thought, well, this was a really valuable thing, but uh, slightly scary, obviously, but um, yeah. but trusting in the Lord that you know, that he would give me strength to, to share and that, uh, you know, it's something that I felt I needed to do. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think that, uh, I mean, that was definitely a point for me, especially back, back at acting school. I mean, you know, we were young. I was, I was 19, uh, well, 18 when I, when I first started, so straight, straight out of high school and, you know, we, we were all, we were all young and, um, it very much, in a. um, you know, the sort of hedonistic lifestyle and pushing all those sorts of boundaries. And people were baffled by my relationship with my girlfriend. Um, yeah, yeah. When that, you know, they, they knew we were, um, <coughs> you know, we, we weren't sleeping together. And, uh, I, you know, I was the butt of the joke, you know, you know, even, even some of the, the lecturers would, <laughs> would sort of make fun of me. Um, and uh, that got a little bit tiresome, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah. um, uh, but also the number of times then that I had these odd little conversations off to the side where people mm. would say, I really respect that or, yeah. you yeah. know, or even actually I've, I've got regrets with, 
mm. you know, with, with some of the decisions that I've made. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, so, but I think also being really clear, like I'm, I've, I've made my decisions of things that I think are important and, and how relationships, uh, mm. you know, are, are conducted best. Mm. And, and, and I live according to, you know, to what, to what I've been convinced is true. Mm. Um, but, that, but that doesn't mean that I immediately want to insist and make a rule that everyone must do this. I, I, mm. I don't think that, I, you know, if, uh, like I, I hope you make good yeah. choices, but mm. I can't force you to, to do that. And I don't, dislike you because mm. you choose to do life a little differently to me like yeah okay i think that's i think that's really petty and silly i, I just don't understand that 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 perspective so mm. yeah I, anyway that's 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 that one um but mm. yeah i don't know did i answer the question about where how these two worlds are overlap um i mean yeah. I, I think I, I think there is um a, a people in the arts um are there because they're intrigued by the big stories, you know, the, the human stuff, the deep stuff in our bones, what makes us human, what motivates us, what drives us. And I think certainly in acting and performing, you know, that it's always about the story. And so as human beings made in the image of God, you know, we shouldn't be surprised when the stories that we love and the stories that we, we <coughs> want to delve into touch on what I would call the, you know the, the the true story the the, the big story mm. um the, the story of god there's, mm. there'll, there'll be there's resonances there now it, it's not it's not mm. the same thing um we've got to be careful there um you don't want to squish everything into a, a gospel shaped hole um mm. but but there are resonances there there's there's cro crossover there and so there's a lot of people who are who are searching and exploring <laughs> and open and interested uh, and I've seen that play out in a number of ways. Probably the, the most stark example is when I've performed in Les Miserables. Um, yeah, and yeah. Les Mis is just such a beautiful story. It, it's a story of grace. Um, it, it is literally, and man's yeah. life is changed by the grace of God demonstrated through the actions of, of, of a bishop. Um, yeah. And it transforms him. And you can, I, I think you can examine that whole piece through that that lens of grace and you can look at different characters on, mm. on on where they fit in that story um and so the the first time we uh i've, I've performed in lame is twice um it's just that's a a, a no-brainer for me anytime lame is pops up i'm like i have a go um the first time um i did the show it's performing you know there was i i knew one other person for sure was a christian um, and, uh, and her and I had done, done, um, some shows before, and we would sometimes meet together before, um, the show and pray together. Yeah. And so, and we talked about it and we sort of felt, I've got a feeling about this. I reckon there's a, I think there's a few Christians around, um, yeah. you know, there was, there was a couple of people we knew about and some on the fringe, but there was just that, you know, there's a bit of a vibe and we thought, I reckon there's a, <laughs> there's a vibe here. Um, yeah. and so we said, maybe what if we, you know, can, can we invite others if they're interested in joining us in prayer um and so i said i'll leave it with me i'll you know i'll, I'll take it yeah. <laughs> and so um yeah you know just just before the show would um you know in our dressing rooms and um I, I stuck my head in um to the other dressing room and just said oh you know call, call, called her called her name out and said oh by the way we're um you know if we catch up for for prayer what do you say five minutes on the on the stage um and she said oh yeah that, that'd be great I said, cool. Um, oh, everyone's welcome, by the way. Um, so, yeah. but yeah, we, we're just going to um, pray and then we go, cool. Uh, no, you know, feel no obligation. Um, and so yeah. we went out there and there were a couple of people joined us. Um, yeah. By yeah. by final night, um, we, we had a, a dozen people. Yeah. Um, standing in a circle on the stage, uh, you know, holding hands and, and, and in prayer together. Uh, before we told this this deep story of of grace and a life transformed um, through unconditional love, um, and it was just it was amazing. It was just yeah. so great. Um, and 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 there were people there. Um, there were people there from different denominations. Um, there mm. there there were people there who had no faith, and they mm. were they were so sweet. Um, when they I had a couple of people, you know, come and ask and say, "Look, I'm not I'm not a Christian, but." Is it okay if I, yeah, if I yeah. come along? I, I don't really come know. To, I don't really know what to do, 
but I, I'd, I'd like to join in if I can. And I said, yeah, absolutely. You, all you need to do is come and stand with us. Yeah. I said, you, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. Um, your thoughts are your own. <clears throat> and I said, look, if, if you want to say something out loud that, that comes to you in the, in the moment, feel free to share that as well. If you want to share a thought, yeah. share a feeling, um, call it a prayer, call it a, a thought that you're throwing up for the group. Yeah. Um, whatever but you're, you're welcome here um mm -hmm. and it was just, it was just really it was really lovely it was such a profound experience um and yeah. i think that that i think that influenced the performance and and was really infused in what we were doing um but yeah that that was really wonderful so sometimes there's real crossover sometimes yeah. there's there's less <laughs> yeah um, well, yeah 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 but it, it's a, i mean but it's but it's always a privilege it's a privilege to be part of a community it's a privilege to be trusted um and to have opportunities to you know, be vulnerable and, and, and share our lives together and learn from each other yeah. and, and grow. Mm. My, my question next was actually going to be uh, about the role of prayer. So you've sort of answered it, but uh, yeah. in regards to prayer, is prayer something that uh, is something where you, you might do that before a show or do you find yourself praying a lot during the performance as well, you know, in, in the background of what's happening? Sometimes do the little, you know, arrow prayers, sometimes called little arrow prayers. You yeah. shoot one up. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, um, yeah. During performance, but less so. Usually during a performance, if if I have any thought, you know, inclined to God, it's usually just, thank you, this is so much fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I tend to be in the rush of it. Yeah, I, joyful. I, joyful. I tend to yeah. have lots of fun during a performance. Yeah. Before a show, I always try and find a moment of stillness. Um. Mm. It depends how the staging is done, um, but typically if I find myself on side of stage um, before curtain up, I'll usually just find a quiet little corner and just have a moment to collect my yeah. thoughts and, and, and pray to God. Um, but for me, I, I reflected um, uh, years ago on a quote from um, Eric Little, the 400-metre um, gold medalist um, in the Olympics years and years ago. <coughs> He's a Christian man who was um, sort of, infamous because he was a sprinter he was a hundred meter sprinter um yeah. but he refused to run any trials on sundays because it's the last yeah. day yeah. um and so he, he couldn't compete in his field um but then they put him in for the 400 meters um which was not his race he had no you know there's a big difference between running 100 meters and running 400 meters um mm -hmm. but but he ran and uh and he ended up winning gold um yeah. and his his whole method was um I, I run the first half as fast as i can and then the, and then the second half i i trust to god yeah um and he was and he was famous for his technique as he would run um it was apparently not a great running technique um but he would uh he would run with his head up because he would glorify god as, wow. as as he would run um okay. and he and he was sort of famously uh quoted as saying when i run i feel god's pleasure mm. um and and i reflected on that and said well i i can't run fast um <laughs> but but i can act and mm. there's something in the way that god has <clears throat> has made me the way he's wired me together that i find acting deeply satisfying i find mm. it a, a deeply satisfying way of expressing myself and feeling connected to myself mind body soul strength before god and so yeah. in, in some ways for me acting itself is a is a form of worship because i'm i'm using the giftedness that god has endowed with me uh, and i'm and i'm using that with great thanks to god um, yeah. so in that sense, mm. yeah, there's always a moment of prayer, at least before where I want to commit what I'm doing to God and thank him for the, the way that he's made me and gifted me and, and hope that the audience, um, can somehow benefit from the, the part of this story that I'm playing. Um, and, and I hope that the stories that we, that we tell mm. will give cause for, for an audience to, to reflect, whether it's a, you know, a frivolous showstopper fun, fun and dance, like the one I'm doing at the moment, but it's actually got a real heart to it as well. Mm. Um, even if it's just a night out of entertainment, I hope that that is a moment of joy for people that might touch them at a deep level or give them relief from other stuff that's going on in their life. And that might serve them, might create a bit of space for them to, mm 
have space to think about those bigger things that they wouldn't usually do because of their troubles. Um, or if I'm in something that's a bit more, you know, maybe a bit dark and, and disturbing, that that might actually disturb people enough to push them towards something bigger than themselves. Um, mm. Or at the very least, I hope that in the moment that people will be transported and be aware that the world we live in is beyond just our immediate experiences um mm. but that actually we do have a world where music works you mm. know isn't that extraordinary like the vibrations of things at different frequencies create a harmony that makes us feel something isn't yeah. that extraordinary yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that art yeah. colors movement voice story move us and make us feel something and can transport us and i, I think that's yeah. again, just one of those glimpses into the transcendent um, and mm. whether it might be frivolous and silly or deep and dark and disturbing, I hope to give people an, op an opportunity to immerse, feel something and immerse themselves in something that is transcendent just for a moment. Yeah. I feel theatre mm. theater and, and cinema does the same, doesn't it? You can forget right. about... It's when you walk out, the first thing you think is, oh, I haven't got any shopping for dinner tonight, you know, but yes, because yes. you've been so transported into... Yes. The moment All those great that... moments when you when you leave a theater and you walk outside and go, oh, this is still light. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's right. right. Oh, what? Where so true. You? What's going on? Like I've yeah. I've totally forgotten where and when I am because I've just been yeah. somewhere else for yeah. some time. I don't know where I've been. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I love that. I love that we can do that. Um, and and you know, humans can grow through story, right? Like mm. our, our lives can our lives can be changed through story yeah but, i've been i've been you know some of the stuff you've been saying i know this is probably a bit off topic but i've just been mind blown by one some of the things you've been saying because i'm starting to really think a lot about now how how much the arts are interconnected because i mean I, probably one oh, yeah. thing i haven't shared on in in the podcast and in, in chatting too much with people is like i've my eyesight's not great and it's it's gone down over the years and one of the things that I've lost is the ability to do drawing as effectively because uh, the lines are jagged for me they're not straight anymore right. and I and uh, the pleasure that I had like the pleasure you have in acting yeah. is is was in somewhat affected but music to me has been so incredible because it's actually like painting or drawing in itself you've got your yes. drum beat you're layering strings here the keys go here you know usually how it's going to end a bit like a creative writing story like like what Lockie's yes. doing you've got some idea you know what you're aiming towards but there's kind of like a band of significant yes. events that are going to happen yes and the more I think about that I think that's very script like it's very creative but it's <laughs> You could apply that to so many different artistic uh, oh, absolutely media. It's still very think, interconnected. Yeah, I think there's a whole, and I think there's a whole theology there that you're touching on, <laughs> where yeah. you know we talk about God, God as Creator. What does that mean? Um, yeah, and yeah. So for for me, that that's part of the you know the great mystery. You know, mm. at the risk of going down a, a, a total destructive um, rabbit hole, but um, you know when people talk about, you know, the providence of God, is God totally in control and you know, mm. in charge of everything? Or do we have free will and what's going on? And I actually think understanding creativity is, is a, mm. at least a window into maybe understanding how that works. Like yeah. I know that when I'm creating a character, like I'm in charge, I'm in control, yeah. I'm, I'm making choices, but there's something in the process where the thing itself starts informing back to me. Mm. It's, mm. it's symbiotic in that nature, you know, like, and, and it, it always surprises me how, I can do something that mm. surprises me, mm. you know, and you can do that yeah. with music. You can do that with, with art, with, with visuals. You can mm. go, Oh, 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 I just like, I yeah. just discovered a thing, even though you kind of go, well, that was weird. Cause I did it. Like I did it. And yeah. I, and I, and to a certain degree, I even chose to do it. And yet mm. it surprised me. Yeah. And, and it is informing me. Mm. And, and I have a relationship with, with this craft. Um, mm. and I, and I do think there's, there's something in that for us in mm. understanding the, the nature and character of God that mm. yes, God is sovereign. Yes. God is, you know, is, is in control. You know, um, it's, it's, it's God's world and God's purposes will, will come about. And yet our world seems to be, it, it seems to have a dynamism to it, um, mm. that is mm. not as neat as what you would expect if 
everything was regimented um, and, mm. and preset in mm. that kind of deterministic way. Um, and and I, I kind of like the idea that God as creator involved in his creation going, ooh, <laughs> like, <laughs> how cool is this? <laughs> like, uh, there's something in me that, that, that delights that, that God might be something like that. I don't know that he'd make that sound, but I think <laughs> <laughs> well, I've actually read stuff by Tolkien where he talked about humans as sub creators, as in yes, having yes. echoes of God's creativity, you know? Mm. Yeah, that, mm. that's right. And and I think there's, you know, there's, um, there's, there's been a lot of thought around some of those things of, you know, when, when, when we're creating, we, we're kind of somehow tapping into this great movement that God is, is on about. Um, and, and we get mm. to, to sort of play around with that. Oh, there it is. Got my Tolkien in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and again, you know, the the, the power of story, right? Um, we yeah. we can we can move yeah. people, we can transport people, um, and, and ourselves as well. Um, so mm. yeah, I was I remember back to my high school days. My um, high school drama teacher said that um, his his phrase was, "Actors should be super people." Um, if I, I don't know, that I, I, I like the phrase itself but his intent was really great and it, it always stayed with me and and what he what he meant by that was you know actors should be the most um empathetic people the most understanding and patient people because we unlike many actively put on the shoes of other people um mm. and, and and we take on their stories and we live in their stories um and, and we and we really seek to understand people's pasts and what's led them to do the things that they do now and we we should be understanding them and, and we should be incredibly patient and so yeah his phrase actors should be super people um and and that, yeah, that part of the toolkit yeah and that that really stayed that really stayed with me um because unfortunately mm -hmm. it, it's not the case you know there's a there's a lot of performers who are incredibly conceited and, and, and self-serving which is uh, for me is just a great tragedy and i think is to is to entirely miss the point um so yeah to, to to be a performer i think you have to be something of a servant um you're you're serving the craft you're serving uh the story and you're serving your audience as well you you I always always think of the audience as the the final member of of the ensemble they're a, an odd multifaceted member um there's a lot of them forming this one collective entity mm. and they don't know the they don't know the, their part um and sometimes they get their part completely wrong god love them um but but they're an essential member of the ensemble um, oh yeah because actually without yeah. them we are grown-ups playing dress-ups which is a really weird thing to do uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, st you know stand-up stand-up comedians they're big on that yeah. they've got to read the room you know they oh, they're going to respond to your joke and you want to say a few jokes that you can build up that laughter until it's reached a crescendo you want to yes. you know you want to be machine gun like in how you're you know if, if someone's caught onto something if they if they're laughing at that well then your next joke's got to hit you go next you know it's got to be that, oh that's right and and yeah. so in that sense you you really do need to respect and honor your audience um mm. and i'm not surprised when you know sometimes there are people who have a, a sort of a dis disdain for the audience it's you know it's like Mm. And I've seen it in a number of different ways. Some, sometimes it's, you know, more sort of classical theatre people who are just like, oh, they're opening a packet of chips and they rustled and someone coughed and it's, oh. And look, there are some things like that that do annoy me. I'm a bit of a purist in that. I'm like, oh, lolly wrappers, stop it. No, cellophane should be banned. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, but but I can't hate them for it. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, and then there are others who might have a, a, a bit of a you know look down their nose at an audience as if you know that they're the great unwashed and we we are the those who have ascended and we shall teach mm. them what it is to be humans and uh you know our stories shall um you know still go but you ought to do that with again with with great respect and dignity yeah, um, yeah. And, and honor to these 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 people who you know have actually paid money <laughs> yeah. to, <laughs> to come yeah. and see a thing and and again without them what we do doesn't make any sense. Mm. Um, you know, if you're a stand-up comedian and you've no audience, you are just some someone sitting at home giggling at your own funny jokes. <laughs> like that's a weird yeah. thing to do. <laughs> it's a fun thing to do, but you, you don't <laughs> want to spend too much time doing it. No, um, that's right. 
yeah. you know, and so, an actor actor without an audience is probably a lunatic. Oh, it's a oh, absolute, <laughs> absolute lunatic. You know, but they're having fun, lucky, yeah. So. Oh, have, yeah, sure, sure. But but you're playing dress ups, man. Um, yeah, that's right. You know, you're pretending to be someone you're not, and that's mm. what we need to do. So, um, yeah, no, with, without the audience, we it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So they're, mm. they're an essential thing, and you know, we 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 must serve, honor, um, and and respect our audience with with dignity and care. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the next question is a. Is a bit of a double header it's a bit of a sort of a slight change from this from topic but um it's a sort of a question with two sides of it and one is probably the the one that you know our listeners might not necessarily expect as the question but uh, the question was what would you say as a creative type because i uh, say so fairly established that that's probably as a, a number of us would something that you would identify as what would be one of the most challenging things about being in the world of the church with that kind of mind um and the flip side of it is the reverse what about being a christian a particularly professional ministry worker in the theater and the acting scene what are the, the challenges there you've sort of, sort of talked about some of the the things of being exposed and being visible on some of those hard questions but what would you say in those two worlds what are the things that sit least comfortably about being from one world in that other space i i think that i i think for both of them it's it's, it's dealing with assumptions it's dealing with, with with people's assumptions of of what that means um and and i must say sometimes in the church it's harder um mm especially as a minister i think it's I, I think it's different for people who are um who are creative types or involved in the arts who are, are lay members or um you know your your, your regular punters um in and members of a church uh, I, but being a minister has a, a a people have often really narrow expectations of who you are and what you should do um mm. and, and sometimes that's really troubling like sometimes people you know when when you're not in the box that they expect that that can actually be really disconcerting for people so you do need to be careful um with that but it was one of the things that i always delighted in is, is sort of breaking down those those stereotypes and those boundaries um mm -hmm. uh, i mean it was even worse when i was uh when i was younger uh because there was a time when i was i was an actor i was a youth pastor and I was also a fitness instructor um, working at a at, at the local gym, um, and and I would you know I would meet people and I could see them sort of do that double look and just go, hang on a minute, aren't you that? Wait, I thought you are you that minister guy? Um, and I even had this one I had this wonderful um, moment once. So I was walking through the school, and I overheard a conversation with these uh, with some students, a, a group of boys. Um, and they said, one of them was like, oh, that's that, that's that Jesus guy. He's, he's that guy. He's like, he's, he's come to our RE lesson and talked about Jesus. And when our other, uh, and one of the other kids said, no, 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 no. He's, he's a fitness guy. We went to the gym for like PE one day and he, he like took the class. He's a, he's a fitness guy. And one of the other kids was like, isn't he? isn't he in the theatre? Like, does, I've seen him do a play. <laughs> and I just sort of walked past. I said, I'm all of those things and much more, boys. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> but I mean, that, that, that was sort of delightful. But, but there, there is, a, there is a, a, a challenge in that sometimes when, um, uh, especially, I think in the arts, people are, are, are sort of fascinated and, um, and they're like, wow, that, that's kind of cool. Tell me about that. It, it's, it, you know, it's kind of interesting. Mm. In the church, sometimes people are a bit more like, oh, you know, is that okay? Should, you're not what you're you, supposed to be. Should you be doing that? Um, there, mm. there was, I, I think, when I when I was first going uh, down the path of ordination to become an Anglican priest, um, I, I think there was this sort of assumption among some of my uh, some of my peers um, and and members of the church that they, they just sort of assumed that performance should or ought to 
or just would stop mm. because mm. you're going to be ordained now. It's sort of like, you know, oh. and sometimes people would ask, like, so do, do you think you'll keep acting? And I say, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, why wouldn't I? Oh, oh, no, 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 I wasn't. I wasn't. What, what do you mean by that? Like, why, why would you think that that's, that's important as if these two things are, are completely incompatible? Um, mm. and, and look, there's, de there's definitely a, um, sometimes that the sort of Puritan type thing of all oh, the arts or oh, they're, yeah. you know, they're, mm. they're all oh, those creative, they're a bit, they're a bit funny, those people, um, they're a bit loose, um, and I just think, wow, hang on, that's not the gospel I've, mm. I've heard the counter, you know, I, mm. I, I think, you know, Jesus hosts parties and, uh, you know, yeah. and invites people in and, and, and spends time. Yeah. From all with, different places. From yeah. all different places. Yeah. It's not a gimmick. That's the thing. It's not even like he hasn't set it up. He hasn't stacked the. The, the deck he hasn't sort of brought them in as a way of going see like they, it just is because mm. they're, just, they're, yeah. they're all people and that's yeah. the point we had the conversations with that's right and so yeah i don't know it, it's a uh, that, that yeah that's a bit sort of broad um kind of stuff but no i would i would say that but but then also i mean there's you you've got to have your head screwed on um and and really know yourself i say this to any especially young people who are getting into the arts and getting into performance. Um, I say you've, you've, you've got to know yourself and I, I describe it as you, you've, you've got to know your way home mm -hmm. um, because if, if you're going to go on this exploration through a character and through a place and a story um, and especially the, the further that that story is from home, mm -hmm. the more certain of home you need to be. You've got to have a rock really solid path back home um, it's always tragic. It's, it's tragic when you see people who lose their way and it does happen, um, where, where people lose themselves, um, to a character or to a piece, um, and, and they don't find their way home. People, you know, sadly people, you know, people tragically, um, lose themselves. It can happen. Um, and so you, you do need to know your way home. Um, and, and so for me that, you know, my faith is a big, is a big part of that. Um, and so, mm. yeah, I, and, and you're going to be, you're going to be challenged, um, a lot uh, along the way. And so you, you do need to have that, that sense of self, know what you're on about. Um, because the, the industry of performing arts on its own as an industry, like most industries are, it doesn't care about you. Mm. it'll it'll eat you up and spit you out and not care you know mm. like another performer pff, dime a dozen there's lots of them around um you know and and i think that that was the thing that made it possible for me to actually leave a professional career and go into ministry um is because there was much of the professional industry mm. that i did not love and i have not missed mm. um mm. The, the, the the constant um, you know, feeling of compromise of, um, you know, caring about things that you just don't care about, like an iced coffee ad that, you know, you're going in for an audition and you've got to convince yourself that this is important to make, to make the thing work. But really you're just trying to get a job. You just want some money so you can pay the rent. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yeah. to walk into an audition room and have people like, Oh, well, no, this is really important. And you're like, well, it's not, you know, and you, you kind of want to walk into an audition for, for something like that, you know, especially for an ad, you just want to walk in and just go, Yes or no? Like, let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> You've already made up your mind. Is this it? Don't waste my time. Just tell me yes or no, yeah. and then let's be done. But you know, the, you, you end up doing these ridiculous things. Where I remember one audition, I when it was for an iced coffee ad, um, and they said we're going to have you know some tradie who's like up on a ladder, but then it falls and he's got to hang and climb across these things. So we want to pretend you now pretend that you're hanging from pipes in the ceiling and you're climbing across like trying to get to your iced coffee down there and you're just like standing on the ground in a room with like four people behind a desk looking at you like this yeah <laughs> like, yeah we, we had there, but... 
<laughs> we we had Lenny Firth on, uh, who did an iced coffee ads. Do you know of <laughs> Lenny Firth? Yeah. No, I don't know Lenny. Yeah, he uh, he did the Farmers Union iced coffee ads. Right. And it just it just put me in mind of that I thought I wonder if I wonder if that's part of that probably series. auditioned for the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just but those sorts of things and and, and sometimes yeah. that that can be really demoralizing. Yeah. Um, when when you're just constantly putting yourself out there and I don't know what the stats are now but when I was when I was working professionally we used to say it was something like seven out of ten jobs you won't get. Um, mm. So rejection is is part of the job. Um, yeah. And. Um, and you've you've got to be braced for that. That's yeah. really difficult. Um, and so, so then and then I think it's it, it's some that that's compounded then when back in your, you know, in, in the church community among your your sort of church family and you know we're supposed to be brothers and sisters to each other, right? A lot of people who don't understand the arts community and and don't even necessarily have a curiosity about it um, or a care to find out, um, if you can be quite frivolous about it. Um, and and not really appreciate that how hard some of that stuff is because it's just all a bit silly and it's make believe, right? Um, yeah. you know, and 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 some that that's not exclusive to the church either. Um, you know, the number of conversations you have with people who say, "Oh, so what do you do? Oh, I'm an actor. I did drama in high school." And you go, "Oh, yeah. did you? Okay, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> <laughs> like I did, I did maths up to year eleven. Uh, yeah. But I don't tend to bring that up when I'm talking to someone who's an engineer. Like I just, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I had a scientific calculator and everything. We've got a lot in common, you know. Like, no, yeah, no, we really don't. Um, so, yeah, I think pe- people make assumptions of um, of um, of of the work. So, mm. yeah. Um, but but I I think in. I think based on yeah, and some of the conversations that we've we've had tonight as well, I think one of the the, the greatest points of tension is that in 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 the arts community you tend to be part of a very diverse, um, o- open ended community mm. yeah. um, that frankly sometimes is is more accepting of people as they are than the church is. Mm. I find mm. that greatly challenging. Um, mm-hmm. I, I find that really, really challenging. Um, and, and I, I don't think it's meant to be that way. Um, and so, mm. yeah, I, I, I find that, I find that really challenging, especially when there are people in the church who would probably suggest I shouldn't be part of this community. Mm. Um, and I, I find that, I find that deeply painful. Um, and mm. I, I find that deeply problematic. Um, so yeah, I, I think they're, they're they're probably the great you know they're they're some of the greatest yeah. challenges of 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 kind of having dual citizenship I suppose um, if, that, mm. if yeah. uh, that's a a way of saying it because you know kind of in in, in both communities you you do you, you've got to belong in order to be there um, mm. like we I, I mentioned earlier I think. Um, you know, I find myself something of a, a sort of a chaplain to the arts, but mm. but I'm not really. Um, it's something that I have explored, uh, but it's it's difficult because one of the the difficulties with with the arts community, as I said before, it's so transient. Um, and mm. so, you know, if you're going to be a hospital chaplain, you go, there's the hospital. I'll go there every day, and people will be there. Um, you know. Mm. If, I'm a school chaplain. Um, I there's my school. This is where I go every day. Here are my people. Uh, yeah. Arts yeah. community. So where are they? <laughs> yeah. Especially like in the daytime. Chaplain. Like where are they? Like you know. Yeah. It's it's, like, hello. Where are they? Yeah. They they're gone and they <laughs> yeah. they sort of form up and then they disappear. Um, yeah. And so if you if you're not a member of that community, you don't get to be in there. Yeah, it's the it's the only way in, and so in that sense, it it it, it is more like being a missionary to a transient community um, mm-hmm. uh, than than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dave, here's a multi part question. This is this is my last question. I was going to ask yeah. you. Uh, so there's two parts. If you were going to write a biblical, let's say you've given a chunk of money, you're you're you can make a biblical movie is there a book of the bible that you would love to have like from the old testament new testament you know or two movies you'd like to create uh is, is there something that you'd like to you know 
uh, particular book of the Bible you would explore. And secondly, if you were to create mm. a contemporary a, a movie with a contemporary Christian message, what are some things that you would think are really important for that? Having already said you hate those movies. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll do the second part first because I yeah. think that's easier. I don't think I would. Um, yeah, I, I think... I think we're notoriously notoriously bad at it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, I think we, uh, and I should probably say this, uh, you know, I've, um, I'm much more in the um, uh, evangelical uh, part of the, of the church uh, Mm. and have a, and have a more sort of um, conservative theology, I suppose. Um, Mm. And uh, having said that, I'm also incredibly, critical of the conservative wing of the church i guess i can because that's where where i'm at um you know i sort of the 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 critique i have for um christian movies is the same critique that i I tend to have for a a lot of uh sermons Mm. is that it's it's too neatly tied up Mm -hmm. real world doesn't work like that Mm. um Mm. and i think there and i you know say this quite carefully as a, as a preacher myself. Um, mm. And, and I, I don't always live up to my own ideals in this, in this space either. It, it is, it's much easier to give a, a didactic sermon where you say, here's the text. This is what it means. This is how we apply it. Do that as helpfully as I can. This is what it means in our, in our day today. Hope that's helpful. Um, mm. But that's not how most people are actually going to experience it. That's not what they're going to hear. Um, and just because I've said something really clearly with three points in a poem does not mean that the people who are watching are going to go, that's exactly right. Um, Mm -hmm. I I might not have moved anyone at all, um, where Mm -hmm. actually there's something in the sermon that is an experience. It's a story. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, I don't know of too many people who recall a sermon from three years ago where they go, I remember these points. Um, I don't even know people who talk about a sermon from three days ago who say, I remember these points. Yeah. Mm. But people do remember how a sermon made them feel. Mm. They might say, I remember a sermon. Now, I can't remember exactly what he said, but I remember I just felt a great sense that, you know, I can really trust God mm. or, or whatever. You know, that people people respond to, to feelings. And I, I think we do well to really embrace that a little more and, and yeah. understand sermons as experience and storytelling more than just didactic lectures um so and mm. so I, I i think christian film it falls into that trap it's it, it's too stitched up it's too neat mm. as you said lucky it's a they're, they're playing with a stacked deck um and, and i think because they've they've restricted their world they've said we have to work within these boundaries thinking that these are the boundaries that god has set and so we, we can't transgress these things which actually yeah. means you don't get to tell really good stories um mm. Uh, so I'd, I'd actually be much more interested in, um, in partnering with someone who is either a skeptic or a, uh, a seeker, mm. um, who's maybe, in, you know, engages in life in a bit more rough and ready sort of way. Cause I think you're more likely to get a deeper story. That's more honest. That's mm. more exploratory that will genuinely invite people in. Um, mm. Mm. I think. So that that's how I'd go about the the, the process. Mm. Um, mm. As as far as a story from the Bible, I don't know. I don't. I I, I don't like I I don't have a sort of a you know like a favorite story in the Bible that I always come back to. I mean, I'm captivated by, by the Gospels. Um, Mark and Luke are, are particular favorites for me. Um, yeah, but. But reenacting them is always weird. Um, yeah, yeah. Jesus is always such an odd character. You know, it's just so hard. It, you know, I mean, I'm I'm captivated by him on the page. Um, I'm I'm moved by him in my life. Mm. Um, no performance ever quite rings true for me, mm. and <laughs> and so I'm I'm much more comfortable with having a Christ figure mm. or being in the world of typology. Yep. rather than actively trying to represent i think that's actually um unhelpful one of one of my favorite um you know gospel re- reenactments um is actually one from years ago called the miracle maker where there oh. it's all in claymation 
Oh wow! Um, and I when love Jesus tells when Jesus tells the parables, it goes into um, standard animation, il illustration, um, mm -hmm. animation. So there's a distinction between the real and the and the story. Um, yeah. And I love it. And one of the reasons that I love it is because it's clay. You don't get caught up in he doesn't look real or that that's not it. It, it kind of suspends. It, yeah. It, that, they they suspend reality that way. Um, yeah. In in their format. And I find it much more accessible um, and in some ways truer than having a flesh and blood Jesus. Um, mm. So I, I really like that. And it's also uh, voiced by Ralph Fiennes and he's just amazing. Um, so <laughs> that is, uh, I love that. <laughs> it's really cool. It's a really cool animation. I, I really like, I really like what they've done. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, but, but I'm a sucker for any stories about, you know that have a, a sense of um of of, of, of restored relationship yeah of, of, you know grace and forgiveness you mentioned lima miranda of, of hamilton fame before one of my favorite lines in that musical is um when after you know alexander's committed um adultery and they've their life has fallen apart they've lost their son and terrible things have happened um their relationship he and his wife relationship is so broken and yet there's mm. a moment where they're, it says they're, they're standing in the garden, Alexander by Eliza's side. Mm. She takes his hand and then the ensemble sing in harmony, forgiveness. Mm. Can you imagine mm. forgiveness? Just that phrase. Mm. Oh, gets me every time. Yeah. You know, forgiveness. Can you imagine forgiveness um yeah so I'm, I'm a sucker for that um when 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 undeserved forgiveness is offered when we when we see mm. true grace um in a in a real and messy way that doesn't necessarily make everything okay but it's there nonetheless um i think that's really important um because i mm. do I, I sometimes wonder one, one of my favorite musicals is into the woods and what i love mm. about it is it's it's basically uh, it's a mashup of all the Grimm brothers um, oh, fairy yeah. fairy stories, um, and the first the first act finishes with happily ever after. Mm. Jack has the beanstalk and comes back with the golden egg. Um, the princes of each chased and found and secured their princess um you know everyone's got little red riding hoods being saved from the wolf and um that's all good and then the mm. second act is what happens after the happily ever after what happens mm. then and it turns out it ain't all good because mm. <laughs> the princes turns out they like the chase more than they like the princess um and so they're still chasing um and infidelity is in their future and it, it all mm. takes a really dark and twisted turn um mm. and and sometimes I, I i sometimes play around with those sorts of ideas even with the gospels you know the fact that like we sort of have we we can sometimes have this triumphant sense of you know oh that that person healed from leprosy and they they came back and they gave thanks and they went home rejoicing yeah, and then they lived happily ever after, like they never had any trouble ever again. Like, I'm sure that's not true. You know, I'm sure life wasn't immediately easy for them. They didn't go out the mm. next day, land a great job, and 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 start working. You know what? Mm. Uh, you know the these these great moments, these these passionate displays of faith and, and and trust that people have, and then we assume they just continued on that trajectory exponentially. Like, yeah, maybe they did. Yeah. maybe maybe life isn't like that. Because it's not like that for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, so, and, yeah. It's like when they when they when you do the the story of the prodigal son, and they'll make it all about that that sort of nice happy ending arc, and then you're like, you realize this story isn't about the younger son. No. It ends on the older no. son out in the field raging about the fact that this has been allowed. You know, the story finishes outside the party. Yeah, <laughs> with a belligerent son who refuses to go in. Yeah. And a broken-hearted father pleading with him. Mm. That—that's how that story ends. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think we 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 tend to we want we we want to sanitize and and I don't know convince ourselves that it, that it is okay, everything's okay. 
and now you know, everything, you know that everything's going to be okay yeah sure if you're talking um you know eschatologically the the return of christ and yes of course everything will be okay but in the meantime it's messier than that <laughs> mm. Mm. um and 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 i i like stories that are more honest in, mm. in, in that way so so for me I, yeah they're, they're the sorts of stories that um yeah that i'd like to tell sorry that that, that wasn't the sort of nice uh you know i'd love to do a thing <laughs> kind of answer, doesn't have to but, be yeah uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah no that's that that's that's what does it for me um yeah. and, and they're they're more the sorts of stories that that, that i'm interested in um mm. and, and they're the stories that i love to tell yeah yeah so one last question dave because it's getting late <laughs> um what is one thing that the church, and it's something we've touched on a little bit before, but what's one thing that the church could really learn from the theatre world? I think, I think the church, I actually think the church could remember some more of its history and remember that it once used to be a patron to the arts. Um mm. I think the church could be braver in its storytelling. Um, if if the church could be more comfortable in, in not having a tight ending, mm. um, I, I think we could do so much more. I, I think if the church wasn't so concerned with controlling a story, because um, I think that's what it is. I think the church wants to wants to contain a narrative. And um, and and make sure that everyone agrees on all the points. But the thing about a good story is, you can retell it a hundred different ways, um, and they can all be right or true or something. Mm. Um, you know, as a little experiment, read the parable of the sower to people who aren't really familiar with that story, and don't tell them the part where Jesus. Um, explains to his Later. disciples what it means and ask people what they think that parable means. Mm. And you get amazing responses, some with incredible insight, some that are just so far from <laughs> the intended meaning that, that Jesus says. Mm. And yet it's what people hear. Um, mm. and, and that's how Jesus told the story originally. Mm. You know, th Jesus was okay with leaving things hanging and leaving people feeling uncomfortable or unsatisfied or not knowing fully the church is not so comfortable with that we we tend to want want people to know here's the thing you know and actually by the way i'll tell you the question and i'll tell you the answer mm -hmm. you know no where theater is much more open you know the arts is much more open to saying i'm not even sure i know what the question is yeah let's let's explore it together and yeah and, and and see what happens um and and i think that yeah understanding more of that process um i, I think could do the church wonders um mm -hmm. yeah I, I always say when i'm talking about like writing drama for for church context like don't try and give them the answer <laughs> leave them searching for it yeah 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 <laughs> That, that, that's right that's right um and we've got there's such good material so you know jumping in the wayback machine right back to that where we started you know when i was writing and performing those dramas for the you know university um christian ministry group um i i took us that that simple concept of when paul said shall we sin more so that grace may increase mm. you know now now his conclusion is by no means of course not that's ridiculous but I thought, mm. well, what? What if you did? Let's play with that idea. What might it look like? Like, let's do it. You know, and I did it in a, mm. in a humorous um, sort of setting in a silly way. But it, it really did demonstrate this is ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. You know, what, what an odd thing to do. What a strange perspective to have. Like, but let's push it and then push it some more. Um, mm. and and i think yeah I, I think if the church could see the arts as a playground where you can actually where you can genuinely test ideas 
um, that doesn't necessarily lock you in to a commitment. You know, you know, by, mm. by seeing a movie, by 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 reading a play, by reading a book, you, you're not necessarily giving your assent to that. Um, yeah. You know, and so you know, you talk about Tolkien and you know other other fantasy writers who build worlds and explore worlds. Um, and it, it does make me sad that sometimes Christians want to block those books and and stop mm. people from reading fantasy things because they think it's, it, you know, because it's not the world that God made. So, mm. no, but it's still a world and it's still a world where you can explore ideas. And by going and checking it out and having a look doesn't necessarily mean I'm jumping ship. It just means I'm looking around and actually yeah. understanding that world is going to help me understand my world all the more. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I think the arts has just all these wonderful tools and skills of of, of exploration that that the church could could really um, do well to to utilize a little more. I think. Mm. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of them are probably things we see in the Bible as well that we're just not picking up on. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, indeed, indeed, uh, especially when you know what what do we do with the uncomfortable stories in the Bible? Mm. You know, wh why are they there? Why, why such horrendous things in the Bible? Why some genuinely troubling stories of violence and, 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 mm. and brokenness? It's not, it's not just there as gratuitous violence. Mm. It, it, it's a really important part of the human story. Mm. Um, and, mm. and by having those stories there, and, and I think this goes both ways as well, because sometimes people outside the church use that as a slam dunk. You say, see, that's the problem with Christianity. There's slavery in the Bible. Right? Yeah. There's slavery in the world. Yeah. Like, it's probably slavery in your T-shirt. Like, <laughs> don't get cross with me about the Bible when you're wearing sweatshop stuff. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Um, you know, and so for me, that makes the Bible really authentic and very real because it reflects the world I know, uh, reflects mm. the world that, that I live in. And so people want to use that as a slam dunk to say, that's a horrible story. And you go, <laughs> yeah, but why yeah. is it there? Yeah. yeah. And I think it gives us permission to explore those stories, mm. um, to understand those stories, to understand what, what motivates people to do that. Uh, and understanding that better helps us to understand ourselves better and to more fully become the, the community that God longs us to be. Mm. Mm. Dave, I think that's a perfect place to finish. I, <laughs> I really love how you put that together oh and... no i tied it up in a neat little bow uh, <laughs> there are no it's answers so we never know we won't know we can't understand that's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it was it's been amazing chatting to you and i've got to say um i have seen you do some of your acting in in bible college and and uh um i really admire people who can do that because uh, me being not as confident i suppose i don't know if that's the right word but uh to to do something like that to see someone who can can use their gifts to to share in that way i just love to see that and uh mm. you know someone else in the arts who does something quite different i have huge mm. respect for that world and uh i'm very excited to hear you know what happens next with what you're doing and and how you can um also you know all, all you're serving as well in in chaplaincy as well and, and in ministry mm. in that way because uh, they're both impactful things. So, um, you know, we'll be praying for you and, uh, you know, hope everything goes really well with your next few weeks ahead. Well, thank you very much. And Did entirely you... mutual feelings as well, John, as a one artist to another. Yes. yes. <laughs> Did you want to very quickly put the pressure on John to get the edit, the uh, episode edited and let us know when the show is or any details? <laughs> it's a good um, idea. I, I, I don't mind what... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing how this all comes together. And uh, I mean, I'm curious how long an episode usually runs. You've got lots of stuff to <laughs> to work with. I think we just let it run. Like we don't, we don't. Oh. If, if we enjoy it, like, and it's great, and you know, why cut it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why well, cut good it? Luck. <laughs> yeah, we'll cut the boring bits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, then I won't be in there at night. No, no. <laughs> um, you know, it's like it's like uh, you know, um, sometimes if if things just are so good, why would you, you know, yeah, just wouldn't mess with it, really. Yeah, I just think it's great. 
Well, anyway, thank you very we'll much. work it's it out. Been really, it's been really <laughs> great um, spending time with you guys. It's been really good to chat. Thank you so much for um, for giving me the call. It's awesome. Thanks for joining us, mate. No worries. Pleasure. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. Right. God bless. See you.